Yeah, so it was like an auto jacket. They would hold <laughs> handles and you would, it would jackhammer your d- off, right? And then the tweet was, woman be careful or something. And at that point, you gotta be like, how far is too far, man? You know what? Okay, I, I, uh, I respect that. I, I, I- <laughs> Hello and welcome to the final episode of 2023. Congratulations on making it to the end of the we year. We made it, guys. You survived. Another year we survived. Yes. I'm, I'm impressed. You somehow managed to bring my fridge to the office. This <laughs> is really impressive. You know, when we asked staff to get us drinks because it's an end of year uh, episode, I wasn't expecting like- Everything. Yeah. Like we were gonna have a hey, party for 10. Hey, yeah. It's a company card, you know, right? right <laughs> you know? We Why gave them the you? company card and they're like, wait, I can All buy right, how you, many? We're gonna start with a non-alcoholic first before You're I starting, get jump right. Well, starting I, off with non-alcoholic? I'm start with a non-alcoholic. Starting off with non-alcoholic? Because it's harder to go back, Garn. I'm gonna gone. have a C or be non-alcoholic. I'm gonna start with an alcoholic and then if I feel like going non-alcoholic, I'll go non-alcoholic. Oh, I'm being judged. Okay, fine, Garn. You <laughs> successfully <laughs> peer pressure Yes, me. let's go. Yeah, fine, it's the end of year, right? <laughs> it's it's that ASMR. It's the end of the year. I got Although, mic, to be sorry. fair, to be fair. Cheers, boys. Credit with credit's due. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. cheers. Ever since cheers, uh, our last conversation about non-alcoholic beer, I have been a convert. I converted you, yeah, bro. You did. You did. It's actually fire. Like yeah. Japan has Japan has really been stepping it up with the non-alcoholic options. And um to the point now where, you know, if, I, if it's a night where I'm gonna have like one or two beers, yeah, I'll just stay with the non-alcoholics. I'm like, what's the point? I don't know. I haven't got to the point where I can just drink beer for the taste yet. I fucking love the taste of beer. It's 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 not I, like about, the I don't like alcohol. It's I like just, the taste of beer, but not enough to justify. See, it's the not alcohol. just about the taste because I I remember last time when I mm, we had this conversation, I good. made the argument that you know it just doesn't taste the same, which it doesn't. Mm. But for me, it's the feeling of having a pint. Yeah, you know? that's that's what I'm saying. You you left it. Do you know what it is? I'm still saying that. Do you know do you know what it is? It's, it's not even the taste. It's the it's the foaminess of it. You know, yeah, it's good. it's it's the gassiness that you only get with uh kind of like beer. If you drink if you some ever, fucking mineral water, if, bro. No, because if I you actually if you, do, and I just doesn't hit the if same. If you man. ever get into beer, right? Like there is this ultimate moment of peak refreshness when you've had a day that you felt like, shit, that took it out of me. You crack that can open and you take that first sip, full yeah. foam, full coldness. Peak, yeah. it's every every peak moment of the beer, and you're like, oh. Yeah, but yeah. I'm happy to know that like taking that first sip, which I totally get is the best feeling ever, especially when it's like stupid stinking hot in a Japanese summer, right? Yeah. Like yeah. That, that first ice cold can of beer yeah. is the yeah. best. But I also like the fact that, oh, I'm gonna get a little bit loopy from it as well. You know? <laughs> well, it's sometimes, I don't if know. If I don't want to get drunk, I'll just crack open a mineral See, water. I, I normally don't get drunk though. I normally maintain it like the nice buzz level, which yeah. beer helps me do. Wait, wait, what's wrong with that though? Well, no, that's not drunk though. I wouldn't say it's drunk. It's yeah. just me being like a little funny. And a little do, you, do you not like getting buzzed? Ah, uh, no, I, I like getting buzzed. Yeah, 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 yeah that's fun. But, so uh, I'm trying to figure out what's what's the justification for the non-alcoholic. Well, because okay. I don't always want to get there. I, I, can, <laughs> I, can, I think I do it a little bit different from Connor because for me, mm. sometimes, I mean, this goes back to, I guess when I was working the office job as well. Sometimes mm. you just have a really fucking hard day of work. Sure. And you just want to, Sit back, relax, and I just, crack open a cold one. Sorry, I just said that. <laughs> huh? I literally just said no, that. No, because he he was he was saying about the taste, right? For me, well, like, it's like that's part of the experience there as well to me. Like the yeah, taste, yeah. you know. But it's mainly about oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, well, you've had one sip, Jake. No, it's mainly about like having the long day and then getting that like first sip, and it's like a very nice feeling. And yeah. beer has a texture, mm-hmm. which is important in food. Uh, it's a te- very nice texture that kind of just is. I don't know. It's perfect. I don't know. No, to expand on what you were saying like yeah. before, um, it's the feeling and also sometimes you just want to crack open a pint after a hard day of work without needing to get like the consequence of getting drunk or- get, Yeah, but like- do you feel the consequences after one pint? Well, no, okay. So this is a See, great, this is a great, great okay. argument um, that, because uh, I'm, I'm ready. Uh, yeah. a beer, <laughs> like this beer would be like 250 calories or 200 calories, right? Okay. Not that I'm counting calories, right? But I'm, you know, I, you I, I want to be in shape, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking to myself what I can kind of roughly eat. I'm, I don't count calories to the fucking number, mm. but I'm thinking in my head of like the rough toll of what <clears throat> I've been eating. Sure. And so if I have like two beers or, you know, that's like a, a full, like small lunch or a snack that I could have eaten instead. Um, they call beers liquid meals for a reason. Yeah. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely <clears throat> the carbs are killing, man. It's mm. so many carbs. Especially if you're doing it weekly, right? Cause if you have one beer like four times a week, I have a you solution know, then. That's like a thousand calories. I yeah. have a solution. What's up? Uh, don't drink beer. 
But I, I don't get the same refreshment and enjoyment from like a- Mate, you gotta I, sacrifice one or the other. Well, that's why I-, I, I We're, I we're sacrificing the alcohol. Yeah, we're sacrificing right? Which the is the worst thing you could no! be sacrificing. <laughs> Wait, it's the- What the no, no, fuck? Joey, the Joey, Joey, Joey. It's literally the best scientifically thing. the best thing you could you be sacrificing. You don't sacrifice the fucking caffeine in a coffee, do you? I wouldn't mind doing that. Oh my God, he's too far gone. Bro. Oh, you're getting into decaf now? No, 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 no. He's too far <laughs> gone, bro. The reason why I'm We've never, lost him. <laughs> the reason why I'm never gonna get into decaf, and this is a very piss poor reason, but I think it's valid. Yeah. You know, I've got a, I've got a coffee machine and it takes a bunch of beans. If I, I would have to like beans. take out, <laughs> I would have to take out all the beans and replace them every time I want decaf. Yeah, I don't. I, I can't hear do you that. say beans without hearing you say it. Beans. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to fucking have to change the entire fucking machine just to drink decaf. But well, that's what you get for having the fuck off, fuck off large machine. Uh, yeah, but it's a beautiful machine. It's the it's the centerpiece of my house. <laughs> you have what a fucking Lego piece on your wall. I've got a beautiful Italian engineered espresso machine. All the engineering points of Italy went into the coffee. Every, they they can't make anything else in Italy. Literally, they they don't have anything else. But they <laughs> the have, pasta but, is crying right no, now. Pasta, pasta no, no, as, as in like engineering wise, right? <laughs> Germany, they they did it everything. It was like, well, um, espresso machines, anyone? God, I can't even build a fucking tower correctly, man. No, they can't, it's leaning. <laughs> Just like, what the fuck, man? Have you ever seen a completed Italian roadworks? Doesn't exist. Yeah, sure. well, how's, never how's, seen it. how's your fucking cities going? Oh, they're sinking? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, <laughs> Italy has like every single economic crisis possible right now, but my God, they still make a mean espresso machine. And that food fucking slaps. Yeah, the, slaps. the food is amazing. Sure. Um, uh, point being- So yeah, they, they kind of spec their points to the correct like categories. Sorry. No, it's fine. Honestly. I'm sure it looks lovely. I, yeah. I didn't mean to insert <laughs> that the machine, it's all right. No. Uh, I, I, I took that personally. Oh, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry. No, but because of the non-alcoholic beer, I was like, I saw there was a store selling non-alcoholic wine as well. And as you know, I'm a big- I think that's called wine. grape juice. <laughs> and I was like, I know this is going to be grape juice, but maybe because this, because I've realized non-alcoholic oh, non beer is basically just hop flavored sparkling water. Right? Yeah. So maybe they've just made kind of like, because wine is grape juice, obviously, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always taste like grape juice, you know? Sure, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it tastes like there's wine. There's loads of aspects to wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just the maybe, they made water taste like beer without having the alcohol in it. Maybe they've done the same with wine. I just bought fucking grape juice, but they marked <laughs> it up to like fifteen dollars. You just a bought bottle. expensive grape juice. I just juice, bought bro. really fucking expensive grape juice. I've never been more disappointed in I, my life. I, this I, is what's wrong with society. I, I got invited out to this extremely fancy restaurant, and I it was an Italian restaurant, mm. and I was like, you know, I I love Italian food, but this was like giga bougie fusion. And when I hear fusion food in my head, I'm like, oh, okay. So they're just gonna fuck it up. Um, <laughs> Cause pasta, you know, pasta is just pasta. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I, I feel like fusion's coming back. Fus I think some fusion works, but Italian is one of those things where I'm like, I actually don't fusion it. They actually figured it out. Please stop messing with it. The, um, it's cause the word fusion was just ruined by all of these restaurants that just use the word fusion just to say, that it's they want, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's just say- We like, serve every like, kind yeah. of Southeast Asian well, like, cuisine. I, you know, like yeah. I went to this Thai Japanese fusion and I thought that was great because that was literally just adding spices to Japanese foods because in Japan it's <laughs> just, great. It's, it's all just salt. What that works is fine, yeah. but they added like spiciness to it. I was like, wait, this is like, you guys should do this. Like this is this is great, but I went to this Thai one, it was very good. But the reason I bring this up is because they had a non-alcoholic wine pairing menu and I didn't want to drink that day. So I was like, okay, sure, I'll try it. Um, and, and to be fair, to their credit, I don't even want to know how much it would cost. I didn't pay. Um, <laughs> That's why you did it. <laughs> uh, there was no prices on the menu, which meant everything. Oh, I didn't even want to know. Uh, and everything came out and it was this big, which I think goes against the entire point of Italian food. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to feel morbidly obese after going to an Italian That's the American side of you, yeah. bro. Uh, well, no, I just think Italian food, you should feel very full. Like it's it's a very- Well, you filling. do, because a lot of it is very carby. That's, that's, yeah, right? that's the fusion part of it. That's the fusion And then the part. fusion, they, they fusioned all the food away. <laughs> so, <laughs> because each pasta was like this, and the guy brought it out, and I said, where's the rest of it? The, the, the guy couldn't speak English, and he goes, what? And I said, ah, oh, nothing, nothing. Anyway, he, they brought this, this non-alcoholic- They fusioned it with nothing. Every <laughs> single dish came with a non-alcoholic wine pairing thing. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And they were like, it was like jasmine. Uh, one of them was like jasmine, a, flower petals with something. It was, yeah. and it was kind of okay. I, I felt like it was good enough that for a meal, I would be, I would be like, yeah, that's close enough. Mm. But 
it was missing the core feeling of wine. Yeah. Whereas I think non-alcoholic non -alcoholic beer has kind of gotten the, the core feeling of beer. So yeah. a question, would you, if you had, if you were paying for that restaurant experience, mm -hmm. would you have gotten that non-alcoholic wine? Oh, did you did you do it because you seized the opportunity just, of just, getting it, trying it out like free of charge? It was just super fancy juice that was slightly viscous. <laughs> And yeah. like, which is fine. Yeah, Cause I think right. that like, that, that that's also like an option. I think that like, I think any, any time you can present an option that doesn't have alcohol, we should be encouraging that because obviously the less alcohol we all drink, the better. Um, so if, if you can get it, like if wine tastes the exact same, but with no alcohol, mm -hmm. bro, I'm, I'm all there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You uh, can't I mean, say I, that in front of a fucking sea of alcohol. But that's look, the thing, I, maybe, maybe in 60 years, you know, uh, Connor Jr. will be able to enjoy all the flavors of non-alcoholic beer without needing to drink alcohol. Look, um, look, okay. I'm not, I'm not calling him Connor here's, Jr. Here's by the, the way. thing, here's, <laughs> Just for the, here's the problem, okay? I like getting drunk, sure. Who I don't doesn't? like the consequence of getting drunk. <laughs> you I, know? Yeah. That's that's something that you did not have to deal with in your twenties. Right. And then you grow up and then you realize, wait, there are consequences for the stupid yeah. actions that I take. And it's unfortunate that Japan is a very, very alcoholic country. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we love to drink Well, here. so is England and so is Australia. Well, and I, I thought England was pretty, England and the UK was bad in general. Uh, you know, and I felt that in the UK, it was more so I would drink on weekends and I would drink hard on the weekends. Yeah. yeah. But in Japan, I, what I found is, is that you drink hard, but it'll be a Tuesday and then a, a Thursday and then a Friday and a Saturday. And you're like, okay, hold up now. I'm doubling what I was doing. Yeah. yeah. Reality really doesn't slap you in the face here until you witness a Shibuya meltdown from, with your own eyes. You know? yeah, just, yeah. There, there is just so much more casual alcohol consumption here and mm -hmm. to more of an extent than That's because it's so much cheaper as well. Yeah. Like it's so and cheap to like go eat out. out. Way more here as oh, well. Oh yeah. So it's totally like if you're in England, you if you go out, um, if you just casually go to a pub, then you are probably an alcoholic, you know, mm. but- <laughs> <laughs> Or a Brexit geezer. <laughs> yeah, or, or a Brexit geezer. Like if you just casually go to the pub uh, on most weekdays, you're probably an alcoholic. Mm. How we may, how we like coped with that was we were like, we just drink on the weekends. Guys, we just, guys we're not alcoholic. Hey, we, just, I, we just drink know, on the weekends, right, right? That's how we I, cope I with it, right? I also think that as a human being, you are entitled to self-destruction. Yeah. Um, as long as you're not hurting anyone else. Yeah. If you want to drink on the weekends and that's your thing, fuck yeah. it, do it. And just then- if, you, if it's affecting other people, then you got to fucking address yeah. it. Yeah. And then like that was before I started workforce. And then when I entered the workforce, it's, it slowly started to creep in to be like, today was a hard day of work and some of my coworkers that's like- danger, right? yeah. That's like the dangerous, mm -hmm. that's where like the line, like yeah. between uh, my first example and my second example, that's how you tiptoe the line. Um, so I kind of realized the sad realization that stuff like this helps us fucking tiptoe that line, <laughs> right? Yeah, no, and, it is nice. I mean, it's, it's yeah, yeah. And I, I have a feeling though that you guys have kind of reached this point Probably because you, both of you drink more often than I do. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Most I don't definitely. drink at home. I, I don't think I've drank in like over a week at least for me. And like, I only maybe drink like two or three times a month. So I feel like the more you drink, the, the more oh, yeah. I might start to feel the, like this, this month. This month particularly is generally a bad one. This one, this month is- Oh, I'm, don't worry. Next week I'm in oh, Australia. Yeah, I'm not going to have a sober day. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's like when my when my brother was here, you know, it's his vacation, right? So yeah. when I'm out with him, he wants to drink. And I, you know, and I, I'm like, yeah, fuck it, I'll drink with my brother. I, I don't get to see you that much. Yeah. The problem is, is that when you think about uh, times like that, you're like, okay, my brother is here. He's here for like one week every fucking three years or something, mm. I'd say. It's like, I'm going to commit to that. But the context is that, okay, maybe the week before that, I also just happened to drink a lot. And then now I'm drinking all week. And then maybe I drink a little bit next week too. So it, it ends up being like, it doesn't matter what the circumstances. The facts are is that maybe I just drank a bunch this day. Mm. And then I'm just trying to battle that. Mm -hmm. This is a, yeah, this is a- This is an uphill battle. This is slowly I, starting sound to sound like uh, alcohol, like anonymous or- no, yeah, like it, it is right. <laughs> but this is what happens when I realized, I was like the consequences of having a social life in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Cause Japan social life equals drink. But I mean, you know, I, I lately I've just been saying like, you know, if I know it's gonna be like, cause some people just invite you out for a casual dinner and I'm like, chill, fuck yeah. Mm. And they'll drink and I'm like, actually, no, I'm just, I'm just gonna fucking drink tea, fuck this. Mm. I, I just, to me, I'm like, if I'm not gonna have like four beers, I'm like, ah, I don't fucking But we also that. like, I feel like Japanese culture as well is uh, is an interesting one because even though we drink so much, like casually, regardless of the day of the week, we're also more forgiving to those who don't want to drink or can't drink. Just because I feel there's a lot more people who just cannot drink. Mm -hmm. Right, so like- It's it's, it's very odd because it depends on the person though as well. Mm. I've, I've definitely met Japanese people that are like, eh? you don't want to drink, what? Yeah, to so them I'd be like, fuck off, it's my choice. <laughs> Stop yeah. judging yeah. me. Yeah. Whereas in Australia, like if you couldn't drink, like you were 
you know, in some ways judged. And I'm sure it's the same in the UK as well, right? Because yeah. like drinking culture is such a normal culture over there yeah. that when you see someone who can't drink or doesn't want to drink, yeah. then it's kind of like, yeah. why? I, which, uh, m- Muslims must've been watching this first half of the show being like, what are they talking about? <laughs> <laughs> what, are they, what are they talking about? That sounds like some funny juice that yeah. they're drinking right now. <laughs> That's the yeah, juice. because like I, I every time it's, it always kind of like makes me realize whenever I talk to an American and, so many Americans I know, so it depends on obviously which state you're from, but mm. so many Americans I know don't know the difference. I like, I've had to explain the difference between going out and going out out. If, if, if you guys get what uh, I mean. Like going out, like the first one just being like, oh, we're just gonna go maybe have a couple of Yeah, just drinks, like a casual drink casual or Casual so. time, not drunk. And then yeah. there's going out. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> sometimes, sometimes to explain, sometimes you go out with your mates to the to the pub or something. And sure. you just have a casual, some casual drinks. And on some special occasions, maybe the vibe is just right. Mm. You, ha- you start getting to that zone where you're like, should we, should we go? Out, out. Are we gonna? Are we gonna go out, out? This is a UK specific <laughs> problem because yeah. often, like, if you have to like kind of pre-game, yeah. Normally, that means like, okay, well, there's this 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 pivotal decision moment, yeah, where people are gonna decide, let's keep going or let's go yeah. home. But in Japan, mm. I feel like it's such those lines are so blurred because you're always out in Japan, yeah. True. So you're always close to the next place do, or the next bar. Do you know mm. one thing that I like about Japan culture? What they don't really have a shot culture here. Oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> you know? yeah. I was if you drink with Pete. He finds the places with the shot culture. Okay, well, he's American though. Yeah, I know, but he, <laughs> he just said, you know, he's, uh, he's too charismatic. He gets the bar owners yeah. involved and then they're like, oh, you should drink more. And, oh. You need to go to those like specific establishments though. Yeah. Right? But you know what sucks is that when I tell people, they're like, they're like, how, how did you how did you learn most of Japanese? I'm like, fuck, I hate to admit it, but like just going out and drinking was most yeah. of it for mm-hmm. me. Honestly, that like, is going the best way. Going to these way. bars and talking to bar owners, mm-hmm. you know, and they're so welcoming, especially if you're a, if you're a foreigner who speaks uh, some Japanese. They're no, you know, they and they can kind of see that 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 normally that huge barrier is kind of gone. Mm. There's normally mm-hmm. this kind of curiosity that kind of opens up where you can really just have a really good conversation because yeah. they want to talk to you mm-hmm. and you want to talk to them because you're you know you're at their bar and you want to get to know the, the places. Because yeah. I think everyone everyone has that like especially if you're going to a place somewhat often, you always want to be like, does that guy remember me? <laughs> you're like I want to be I want to be like this guy. He's like, yeah, it's this guy again. You know, because you want to. It's like almost like a sense of community, right? Because yeah, and you don't. You don't get that in a lot of places. If I went to the same- You're the local gaijin at this bar. <laughs> but like, if I went to the same like uh, grocery store for like two years in a row mm-hmm. in, in the UK, mm. uh, right. th- there's a solid chance, at least in Wales, if it's a smaller one. If it's a supermarket, probably not. But if it's like a smaller one, right? Mm-hmm. Odds are you'll the staff will probably remember you, or they'll probably say, "Oh, hi, how you doing?" You know, you yeah. have that little bit of conversation yeah. that just kind of like that, that you don't realize how much it kind of like gives you a bit of like, "Oh man, that's nice." And the only place you can really get this in Japan is bars, because like konbini, they ain't gonna fuck it. You can go to the konbini five million times, and they're never gonna be say anything to you. It's not gonna happen. Nah, Same I, I, any I, store. I, no, I've been recognized by a number of konbini. Well, okay, but Stop. is that is that nah, no no no? I I, I got a girl. I got it. You got a girl. <laughs> I got. I got to hook up. <laughs> but like, nah, generally, right? like that's an anomaly, right? Like, that's like, like not normal, right? So in in Japan, like if you want to get like that kind of friendly sense of like almost yeah. like almost like a missing sense of community. Yeah. Well, uh, I think it also you, doesn't you help that like we are in like the biggest city in the fucking world. But other world, cities right? on earth don't do this. I noticed. London was different. Like London, right. I know if I went to the same place over yeah. and over again, I no. would kind of get that familial connection. Uh, but but that's because they're more. They have more of that stranger friendliness, right? Yeah. Like in yeah. Tokyo, that stranger friendliness is close to zero. Zero, especially yeah, they, exactly, between right? a Japanese and person and a guy. Like, you know? Tokyo is such a lonely place and it yeah. has this reputation rightfully so for being one of the loneliest cities despite being a fucking giant city uh, because there is that like there is like zero sense of community in a yeah. lot of places. Yeah, like walking into like any kind of store in Tokyo is like just the same interaction over and over. It's like it's like entering the item shop in an RPG, you know? Yeah. Like you're going to get the same dialogue every single time even yeah. if you've been in there a hundred times. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I, I like that in Japan, you can still get that, but it's yeah. mainly at bars. And, Only at bars, know, And it's, yeah. it's kind of nice, because I got a bunch of bars that I go to where they're always like, oh, how you doing, man? You doing well? Well, I feel like and it's kind of their bit. job to be social, right? Mm-hmm. Or at least more social. Well, Because I think they realize that that's also a good business move, right? Some to get bars, some repeaters bars. coming back, right? Yeah, or at exactly. least if you were a good I mean, I mean, it's it makes a lot of places that, I, um, that I've noticed, they are just genuinely nice, genuinely nice, and mm. just genuinely enjoy the company yeah. and enjoy the conversation. And they are genuinely curious. Also, I would like to say earlier, when I say I, I got a girl, I was fucking being sarcastic. It's like an old elderly Japanese woman. <laughs> Um, so you got a girl? I got a girl. You got a girl, bro. <laughs> hey, I, she's still a girl, I, is I, she I was, not? I was like, I, I, 
And she works like, okay, so there's this old elderly Japanese woman and she normally works the late shift. Mm. Right. Uh, so I normally hit the company after like a trash taste recording or something. And there was this one time where I went in, it was really late after a night out. Uh, and there was this foreigner there and she was trying to explain something. Uh, she was trying to explain uh, explain how to use like the card system and stuff like that. And he just wasn't fucking You're getting like, it. Allow me to introduce and myself. she was, she was like, and she was like, can you explain to this person what I'm saying? And I was right. like, all right, I got this, I got this. Um, and uh, yeah, so I translated, I translated what she was saying to him to explain how to use the machine he was trying to use. Uh, and then ever since then, she's just like, she's just been like extra like friendly and oh, happy yeah. every time we come in. And yeah. I'm like, all right. I gotta go. That's now. what's up. <laughs> I gotta go now. So next time you go in, you'll be like, "Hey, yo, can I have some of that free chicken?" Yeah, dog? Yeah. <laughs> so you want any uh, That's free chicken? That's gonna go to waste if you don't give it to me. Yeah, yeah. my local combini, they look miserable. I don't blame them. Oh, they do. It's, it's I. It, it is a rough combini. It does not look good. At at our old place uh, up in you know up north, like there was the combini worker near our house, like late at night, who just used to give me free chicken every time I walked in. He was just like. We got some, I'm gonna throw it out. Do you want them? I'm like, sure. Hey, are you the anime man? Do you want a free chicken? Yeah. He recognized you, right? Yeah, he recognized me. And then he was like, oh, you want some free chicken? I'm like, okay. No, I sure. wish it was that easy, Joey. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I wish I could be that famous I to uh, be I recognized. Wish it was, I wish it was Lawson's, then I'd be interested in the free chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Family Mart chicken, get that shit out of here. Yeah, I, know, everyone, I everyone, I know in, everyone I know in uh, in Tokyo, they just agree that Family Mart is the worst. There's a lot of arguments over 7-Eleven and Lawson's, but I think Family Mart is the worst. Well, Family Mart chicken for sure is the worst. Like that is- it's but All their food selection is shit. Yeah. But yeah. You know, 7-Eleven, the smoothies, uh, those are fucking, God mm. they, yeah. You can buy these smoothies in 7-Eleven where it's like, you get it out of the freezer. It's just, yeah, I it's saw a fruit. TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About oh, saw, it. oh, right. Okay. I saw a TikTok so where- so gone, I went to the fucking store and no, I No, 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 so I saw, I saw a TikTok where some okay. guy was like, this is why Japan is living <laughs> in 2020. Well, they make a fucking smoothie? Yeah, <laughs> this, like, so yeah, yeah, this, right? yeah. I, I, saw, I saw a TikTok where it was like, this is why Japan is living in the future. It's and it, way, <laughs> because they have blenders. <laughs> 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 because they have blenders. Get the fucking pink one. It's strawberry soy and it's fucking godlike. It's got like, like a bunch of protein too. Yeah. It's a hundred yeah. calories. It tastes so fucking good. Get it, it's so good. It is very convenient. I do it's love awesome. smoothies. It's awesome, because I like, I, you know, sometimes I want to drink, but I don't want a coffee and I just want something that's refreshing. Mm. That's nice. And it's and it's 200 yen. In the summer as well, especially, because like, it comes out of the freezer as well. Like Yeah, it's so nice. They're, they're constantly upping it. Like I genuinely think, every time I've left Japan now, I'm like, man, I don't think I can ever leave Japan. Like I don't think I, I can ever live anywhere else. Yeah, communities are too strong here. Yeah. It I, made me, I, made, I realized this even going to Korea and I'm like, Combini game week compared to Japan. Yeah. I don't know if I could. Uh, I don't know if I could live it. And their combini is compared to like Tesco oh, or something. God tier, yeah. It's yeah. still fucking god tier. Yeah. But uh, Japan combinis mm. are just on another level. Yeah, a lot of people are always like, "When are you gonna move to LA, Connor, or something?" I'm like, "No, I, I, sh I literally just can't leave Japan. It's, it's too good. <laughs> I'm too, I, I like it's my too I like my life too much day by day." Like it's, it's you breeze everything anyway, Connor. <laughs> yeah, but that's great. Yeah, but I love walking around. It's it's great because we can always tell. I can I can now tell how often Connor uses Uberies because we have a company card. Well, okay, I fixed it now. <laughs> right, I fixed it. We have a company <laughs> card and, and Connor did not realize that he was using his personal Uberies orders on the company yeah, card. What the fuck? Yeah. I never agreed to this. Yeah, no, I, I reimbursed you guys, I reimbursed yeah. you guys, all right? So, I'm a man of my word, okay? So I, I'm giving I'm, this man free meals for No, while, no, I reimbursed bro. it. I gave the money back. <laughs> so I, was, I remember I was just chilling and I get this notification being like, you, uh, your your card has uh, been charged for Uber. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, wait, uh, none of the boys are here. I'm at home. Why? Yeah. Why? Who's using Uber right now? Yeah. And I log on to the app that we all have and I scroll down and there's like five Uber Eats <laughs> orders all marked to Connor five days in a row. And I'm like, Connor, what the fuck, mate? <laughs> yeah, our bosses suck, all right? I love going out, he says. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I love walking around, but in terms of like meals, I still like, yeah. I still don't often like, I won't just stop at a place and eat normally. <laughs> I, I, I've been walking a lot around lately. Uh, even if it's like an hour and a half walk, I'm like, fuck it, I'll walk. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Uh, Cause I, when I, I love doing this now. Yeah. I'll just walk to a place mm -hmm. and when I'm passing places that look cool, I'll look them up on Google and I'll see the pictures of the food and how it is. And I'll be like, okay, I'm saving this, I'm going here. Uh, and and then he that. goes home and orders Super Eats. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I don't want to eat out all the time, right? Because I want to- like, so, you, so you eat out in. Yeah, well, it's salad. Most of the time, I'm just fucking ordering a salad. It's boring. <laughs> Uh, you know, it sucks. Yeah. It's a shame. I felt bad because I messaged Connor when he was like live on stream or some shit, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Yo, can you? Uh, <laughs> I think you've been charging the company card for your for your all your like, yeah, orders." Because <laughs> I got the notification too, and I was like, "Shit!" <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know. Yeah. Continues to play. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. you know, there's nothing I could do at the moment. You know, the burrito was coming. <laughs> oh nah, it's all good. It was a good burrito then. Oh, so it's the end of the year. You guys are ready for next year? No. I've not heard a single person say they're excited for 2024. Just what what is there to be excited about? Nothing. I mean, people were optimistic. Uh, I feel like COVID removed optimism for like hoping for the next new year. I think we're still good. like we're still recovering from COVID. Like, I think people, we are. People are just the world is not well adjusted still. It's not the same, man. <laughs> it's not the same. I mean, I feel like before people were more Optimistic, but like, yeah, this year is going to be my year. And I don't know if uh, the world just got a lot more pessimistic, but uh, I think the world has got more pessimistic. I mean, especially after you know, so many of them had to experience the, the horrors of COVID, right? Yeah. Like, you know, it'd be pretty. It's pretty like it's pretty difficult to just tell someone like, I, you know, you were locked in the house for like three and a half years, but yeah, it gets better. Don't worry. It's yeah. like you know, hard to believe I mean, for some people. There's, there's there's two sides of this where it's like, all right, if I'm like, if I was in school, right during COVID, mm. I, I get like two shit years of schooling, maybe three of like just schooling that is crap because I'm on Zoom, mm. yeah, right? And then uh, maybe I, I graduate or something, especially if you're around graduating time, this is dreadful. You go to the workforce, they're like, oh, by the way, uh, also your, your country, everyone's getting old and you're gonna have to pay like double the tax your elders paid. You can't afford a house, RIP. It's like, okay, well shit, I guess what is there to be excited for? Like I'm, I'm literally told that it is gonna get worse for me. Um, but on the other hand, Yo, I'm like GTA Six, though. Yeah. On the other hand, on the other hand, GTA Six. Yo, GTA Six, though. <laughs> Persona Three Reload, though. Uh, fucking Shit. hype games, hype TV shows. But then, but then I can't even get excited about hype TV shows or games because there was the writers' strike this year and actor strike. So that in like four years, we're gonna get like fucking Lost season four and Prison Break season three all over again, where mm. every TV gets suffered now because of the writers' strike. Um, so it's like, all right, well, great. So fucking not, there's like not a lot to look forward to. Yeah. Um, AI is getting worse. Um, it's a pretty good time to be miserable if you were betting on that. <laughs> I don't, I, f I feel, okay, what do you think? Do you think there's gonna be a new tech fad next year? I swear to God, every year now, there is some new tech I, fad. AI is gonna be like the next big thing for the next like 10 years. No, AI, AI is gonna like, prev like, Gonna prevail. Be, yeah, it's gonna it's, be the biggest. It's, it's only gonna thing. get bigger and more prevalent. I totally agree with that, yeah. but. Maybe like AR, Bionicles? potentially. Because like the year yeah. before we had fucking <laughs> NFTs and- Did you say Bionicles? <laughs> <laughs> Bring them back. That's my childhood. <laughs> yeah, like the, year, like the year before last, uh, or was it like, I think it was last year we had yeah. NFTs and then before that it was like gestures. Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, then this year was like AI where people were like losing their shit. I swear to God, like tech bros find a thing, a new thing to get excited about every single year. I, I swear it's gonna be like that AR shit, you know, after they after Apple announced like those goggle things, like yeah. the, the tech bros are gonna be all over that and they're gonna be like augmented reality is the, is the future. It's gonna up our productivity. It's gonna make everything so, you know, safe for people, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, it's just gonna be another fad like it always has. Unless I'm wrong and this ages like milk, but uh, you know, so far the track record hasn't been great. You know, people seen the same thing about NFTs three years ago and look what happened to that. Yeah, I mean, the some of these ideas sound very exciting. Mm. You know, I AI, I think we just have, need to figure out what the line is between what's ethical and what's not because people are gonna use it Either way, yeah. shape or form, right? Totally. Uh, AR, is the Apple Vision coming out next year? Uh, I think it's, when's it coming out? I right. think it's next year, right? Or it's 2025. Yeah, when's it, when's it coming out? <laughs> well, that's just porn for rich people. You know what I mean? Mm. Early, Early 2024, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm not paying 4K to watch porn. <laughs> I'm just not. Like, that's, that's disgusting. <laughs> Well, you can you can do that with uh, any fucking VR system, right? <laughs> you, can do it, you can do that with an Oculus too. It doesn't need to be the. Yeah, I tried watching porn in VR one time because I was interested to see how it was, and I was yeah. like, "This is a horrible experience." Yeah, this is like motion sickness meets blowjob. It doesn't even look good either. No, it doesn't. It's all like warped and shit. Like, all right, I, I, I got like I got to ask: At which point does your mate come like come home with like come. a purchase? <laughs> <laughs> it does that, but also comes home with the purchase, and you're like. 
All right, we gotta have a talk. We gotta have an intervention here because I saw I saw this tweet the other day. I'm gonna see if I can find it, but it was yeah. like, it was this fucking owner hall that was basically <laughs> uh, that was basically strapped on to a jackhammer. <laughs> that was like, almost so it's like, like an auto jacker. Yeah, so it was like an auto jacker that would just that would, that, that you would hold like you were uh, you <laughs> they would hold handles <laughs> and you would it would fucking jackhammer your dick off, <laughs> right? And then the tweet was, "Woman, be careful" or something. Woman, like uh, woman, be aware. And and, and at that point, you at that point, you got to be like, all right. How far is too far, man? How far? How far do we have to go before oh, wow. you have to have an intervention? You know what? Okay, I I, uh, I respect that. I, I, I do this series where I review my viewers' rooms, right? And mm. somebody had like a, a bust. It was like a torso mm. that had a hole at the bottom. Right? So it was like a it was like a, a a torso of a woman that you could you know and do things to. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's too far gone. Like like well like like here to here. Uh, like here to like leg area. Oh, oh, okay. So the hole was in the normal spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So like you, it was like you would, you would, you know, you were doing it. Yeah. But I, I felt like that's too. But far it had gone. no head, no arms. No, 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 no. But I felt like that, like if you are having sex with that, you are there's something wrong. I don't see what's the problem with just using your hand. If I'm being honest, you know. But yeah. I feel like if you're buying that shit around it, I'm like, come on, man. Like, yeah. This we should be investing elsewhere. <laughs> All right, I, I, found, I, mean? I found the tweet. The tweet is, "I will forget you exist," and <laughs> this. No way. This, uh, I've seen that before. You've seen that before? Yeah, I've seen this too. That's actually, and there's a phone holder and at the top. And there's a phone holder at the top. So you got to, ja there is definitely no way I can show this on uh, YouTube, but yeah, it's- You it's, can, you can huh? show that. You can, you can show, can I show this? Yeah, I think you can show it's that. so good. All right, I'll, 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 I guess I'll send you the link, Kai, uh, for you to show mood on it. Like, I think like theoretically it's like, yeah, that stuff could work, mm. but it's like when you buy shit like that or make that, you're mm. like resigning yourself to, you're like, well, I'm just, this is gonna be my life. Yeah, pretty much. I, I, feel I mean, you at that point, you will forget that girls exist because uh, girls can't like provide need, yeah, that kind like of I, same convenience yeah. as uh, this uh, phone holder jackhammer that jacks you <laughs> off at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know? That's what the tech bros are going to be on yeah, next year. That's that's the new that's the new yeah. thing we're going to be scared yeah. of. It's just like the apocalypse is happening. Birth rate is going down. Humanity is going extinct, and there's nothing we can do about it because everyone's busy. Tech bros are going to be like one upping each other, being like, "Mine's got a six piston. Well, mine's got an eight piston. It's got a V8 in it. V8. <laughs> I'm going to try this. I'm try this cheap mine's move. got a 4080 inside of it. <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, uh, uh, I don't know, honestly. Like I feel like in the past couple of years when like, I guess the, the, the term tech bro, especially was kind of starting to come into relevance Yeah. Uh, in the mainstream, I guess. Uh, like I had no clue. Every single year, it was, it was kind of a game for me to be like, what is it going to be this time? And uh, oh, let's I just say, I didn't see NFTs coming. I didn't see NFTs coming. No, I don't know. No, I called the, them making One Piece remake. I told, I said on a podcast episode, I was like, they're, they're, gonna, re they're gonna remake One Piece. When they were done with One Piece, they, I said when they were done. Though, yeah, but they're not even done with it. But I said I called. They were going to remake what it, and they did. It. Yeah, but they were they jumped the fucking gun. Yeah, they were like, "Fuck it, let's do it now." They got to capitalize on it while it's hot, right? Oh but yeah. yeah, I think jacking off to a jackhammer probably not good for your mental. Even if even if I you're, mean, well, I think your even, mental is a bit far. Even gone at that point, you know? like you shouldn't do that. You, if you if you own a, a fucking fuckable doll at home, get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. Just I'm use your hand, bro. Please. <laughs> For your own sake. Yeah. It's no different from watching. Yes, it is. You bought a human sized fuck toy. It is very different. <laughs> no, because get even, rid of it. Even the Tenga video that we did, yeah. some of the contraptions that they like brought out for us uh are fucking absurd. They're monetizing your loneliness. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're lonely and they are taking advantage of you by <laughs> saying, hey, look what you need. <laughs> you know, because I see some of these contraptions and at that point, it kind of just feels like you're just hacking the mind to find the most efficient way to jack off. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, uh, if you've never been, you know, if you've never had a partner before, you know that, you know, sex isn't the most efficient thing of all time. You know, it, it, it actually takes a lot of work a yeah. lot of times. It's a workout. Know, it's two pumps for me, gone. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to walk in a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Two pump and done, that's what they call me. Look you, into my eyes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> was that fucking Manwa where he's like the guy with like the cum touch? I can't remember the name of it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck, what was, what was the name of it oh, again? Oh shit. It's my favorite Manwa. Oh, it's, like, it's such a good Manwa. 
I can't remember it though. Yeah. Uh, golden, not golden boy. Uh, golden boy. <laughs> so, that's something else. I don't know, golden touch, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, humanity is more and more fucked every year. Yeah. I can see why the older generation, like, you know, keeps repeating that. Yeah, but I mean, this has like, been like a phenomenon for, for um, centuries where the previous generation deemed the coming generation to be Oh, for sure. But oh, yeah. I feel like this time they're onto something. No, no, you feel that because it's your- <laughs> Every generation felt like that, Joey. Yeah, there's literally like newspaper articles of like the early 1800s being like, these, these new generations have no manners. They can't, they can't function they're in modern They're walking around time. showing yeah. ankle. Yeah, and then, you know, they, then the next generation does the same thing. And yeah. this is a perpetual thing where obviously the new generation are gonna evolve, you know, and it's up to us to evolve. evolve. You, you yeah. mean grow up? No, evolve. Like what they, what their tastes what are. You mean like they're Pokemon? Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> like what? Our dad wasn't jacking Human off. is evolving. Our dad wasn't jacking dun, into dun, a tenga. You know what I mean? That's a new, that's a new development. Yeah. Jackhammers, phone holders. <laughs> that's a new generation. But they're but, evolving. But, but I will say, yes, you know, definitely every generation for the past couple of centuries have been saying that about the newer generations for sure. But I feel- No, you're falling into the trap, Joe. You, yeah, you, you are. Feel like weird. Yeah, the different one. The next one really is fucked. No, but like we were talking about like the the uh, you know lessening of optimism in the newer generation, right? That's true. Like how everyone true. is becoming more doomerish. Yeah, I think so. Like, has that happened in previous generations? Maybe not. Maybe they have, but maybe not to the same extent as I mean, it is it, now it, it, because we're running into. I actually feel like things like as internet. millennials, we started that trend. Boomers <laughs> just kind of like went with the depression trend and we're just like, well, actually we can do it better than you. Uh, we wow. ran so Gen Z's could walk. <laughs> I'm sure there was somebody in 1910. They were like, oh boy, gee, in America, I can't wait to join the mo job market next year. Boom, great depression. No jobs for you. Everyone is starving. Four year, three or four years, this shit lasts for. Yeah, I'm sure they would probably think, well, we had it fucking well, yeah, bad. Obviously, but like, you know, say for like, say for like our generation, right? Like millennials. Yeah, yeah. Were we, was it so much of a common uh, like uh, idea between like people of our generation, I guess the newer generation yeah. to be like as like doomery or sad about our future compared to like this newer generation. Well, also we didn't have to fucking kill each other. You know, you, you talk to the older generation and they went through fucking several world, like several yeah, wars. Not, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not comparing like it that. to that. I'm and like, they, they look at our generation. I'm like, what the fuck do you have war with? Well, Coffee? clearly. Yeah, clearly. Like, like, <laughs> but like, I'm talking about this newer generation now. Yeah. Right, well, like the newest generation. Like, why is there suddenly so much of a bigger shift? I think there's a lot of fucked. Uh, <laughs> I think there's just a lot more shared experience. And also, you know, th th there was definitely like houses were and stuff like that, ha mm. house, house rent and whatnot. It was definitely rising like 20 years ago, but obviously For sure, yeah. there wasn't as many people talking about it online uh, and, and arguing about it. Also you have to bear in mind that like, like 20, 30 years ago, it was kind of seen as like a bad thing to be like, I can't afford this. Or like, this, this might be- but Nowadays this, it's like, hey, can you also not afford rent? This might be I can't afford rent. completely mm. anecdotal because I have no evidence to back this up. But I mean, this, yeah, this is all pure speculation. Yeah, no, no, for no, like, like for me, but uh, I think just, just existing has never been harder. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> just, just, just the act of existing, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, maybe that you know that you had some bad times, like the Great Depression. Obviously, <laughs> bad times, <laughs> as we the like big sag. As we like to call it, the big sag. Okay. Um, okay, okay. We should the Great Depression. Too. No, we shouldn't have that. Well, we should call it something better, not the Great Depression. The big sag. Yeah, no, we no, call, no, we call no. it we the big have, sag. No, if we have another one, we should. The oh, big sag. No, we we'll call it the big sag. <laughs> the big sag of the 2030s. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's a hundred year cycle. <laughs> Did, when did they coin the term Great Depression? Was it during the time? Well, it was it was happening right. in the 30s, right? Well, this is, this is like a good question of like, did they call it, um, cause it was called the Great War, World War One, and they asked yeah, them, yeah. when did they start referring to it as World War One? Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until I think a lot long after that World it, War II. That, that, well, yeah. it was probably not until World War Two, right? But I think it was sometime after as well. It wasn't immediately after. They weren't like, I remember one, this is the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it was, uh, there was a good video about it. I can't remember what it's called. Right. Uh, but I mean, that doesn't fucking matter. It's stupid, stupid figuring out when shit was named. But, but like, you, I wonder, well, what, what, what oh, are they gonna based, name? It's based on a book called The Great Depression by Hoover. Oh, okay. Yeah. What Robert's are they gonna name like COVID times, Brecken, when historians look back and think- COVID? That, par pandemic? I don't know. This is this this isn't the first pandemic we've been through though, right? This is the, this is the first global pandemic in a very long time. 
I yeah. mean, there was the Black Death as well, but that was only in Europe. <laughs> that but, only, but also, yeah. that only wiped out like a third, a third of, of a, a third of humanity. And, and also, if you remember that, like this is the first <laughs> pandemic that's been available, uh, that's very easily spread in the modern travel era, where people mm. can just get, uh, like, I can get to, I can be in Australia tomorrow. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was kind of difficult to travel in the 1300s. You know, back then, they, like, I think in like, uh, in what I think one of the wars, there was like. Uh, uh, there was a kind of influenza that was that was wreaking havoc. Mm. Yeah. Um, and but th- that was localized to Europe at that time, right? Because there mm. wasn't people like flying all over the fucking place, spreading it to their like yeah. and whoever and everyone. Um. So yeah, it's it's, it's I mean it's interesting. I think it's it's, it's weird because like I, obviously we're we're in very good financial places, but I still feel like holy shit, like I buying a house is still a hard thing to do. Oh yeah, it's which scary. is like crazy. I'm like, oh my god! When I look back at brochures, they're like, yeah, we'll ship you a house and you build it for for uh, ten thousand dollars. I'm like, what? It's a giant Lego set. Yeah, they <laughs> used to sell made-to-order houses. They would just send you the parts and you build it. Mm. This is the thing in America. I thought it was crazy. That's so cool. We that's, can't do that now. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, yeah, those made-to-order houses that uh, <clears throat> you could that were in America. Uh, that's prefab, but that, that's, I think that's all pretty come up. You could literally get sent and they would send you all the things in like crates and you would presumably just build it. Oh my God, this is like <laughs> Ikea nightmare mode. This is your yeah, final, this, one, this, one, this is this. your final boss. Mail order. Yeah. <laughs> after, after this is where the Lego I'm trend- training up with the Legos <laughs> and this is the final Look boss. This mail order house. It's beautiful. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a nice house. Holy uh, shit. Yeah, obviously and even, even with inflation, it was still way more affordable than houses nowadays. Yeah. Jeez. Um, it's crazy though, but that's back when everyone just, I guess, somehow knew how to build a house. Yeah. I, oh yeah, it was $2,000. In uh, 19 something, which even with inflation 1910s, wouldn't come yeah. close to 19, 1960, 16. What's, what's $2,000 in 1916 in today's money? Could you have a look? Two million. <laughs> just type it in. There's like, like calculators that tell you. No, I've, I've been recommended more and more videos of just people living on the road in fucking vans and caravans yeah, and shit. That I've feels like, an, like a, a kind of subconscious like struggle answer to this world we live in where it's like, I can't fucking pay $31,000. That's nothing. Yeah. Holy shit. What um, the fuck? Cars are more expensive. Yeah, than I mean, yeah. I, could you guys ever do that? Like just pack up. Okay, number one, I find this concept really interesting because I don't know how many other countries you can get away with doing this aside from America. Mm. Because it's funny, because I've actually uh, met people that have done that life. Mm. Uh, when I went back to Wisconsin this year, uh, Sydney's like extended friendship circle had like some new people join and they had had a year or maybe two years, just literally they sold everything they owned, put everything into a van and just traveled the road and just lived on the road for two years. And after two years, they just hit Wisconsin and were like, I think we've had enough traveling. Let's just, uh, just get an apartment That's here. badass. It's, it's fucking badass, but yeah. holy shit, it made me realize how OP America is because I couldn't like, imagine like traveling, imagine You'd because- England in a, in a week. Yeah, yeah, imagine doing that in England or some shit. Cause mm-hmm. they were like, yeah, we started off in like West Coast, went up North, went all the way to Alaska for like a bit, yeah. like drove back down and I'm like- You yo, drive through Canada as well. Yeah, I'm like, yo, that sounds fucking badass. I mean, let's, we, we let's, kind of in a sense did like a, a, a light version of that on the US tour, right? Like we were we were in that bus for 50 yeah, days. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I can and do And considering it. that I enjoyed the tour the most, I could probably do it. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I need to be stationary to do anything. Like I like having a zone. Yeah. My little safe mm. save point where I'm like, this is where I like subconsciously, this is where I clock in and out of life. Right. I'm, I need that. But wouldn't you say that that's the little personal van and personal vehicle that you have? No, because you're never truly stationary, right? You're always subject to someone else's rules, right? If you park in this place, all right, what? how can you park here? Or what can you do? Yeah, if you put it in the middle of the fucking desert, okay. But then what if something goes wrong? You know, what if you pop a tire in the middle of the fucking desert for some reason you're driving there? Yeah. I don't know, there's, like, there's so many factors. So that's, that's, like, that's like city boy mentality all the way. Cause I actually, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I, that's, I, I would be I, terrified of I that shit. I care too much about everything that could go wrong. And I think you have, you cannot care about shit going wrong if you yeah. want to live that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need to like almost disregard, oh, how am I going to shower? How am I going to do laundry? Like I'm sure then they work it out, right? Cause they're, yeah. they're, they're like, but to me, I wouldn't even want to embark on this unless I figured it all out. And I wouldn't even want to go on it unless I figured out the route, which is like psychotic and I, yeah. I just can't do it. Like mm. I just, to me, it wouldn't, 
Yeah. So you don't have a manly urge to drop everything and just build a cabin in the woods and yeah. uh, just fucking oh, survive, on the, <laughs> survive on the wilderness. Are you kidding me? I will love to do that. Like, the manliest the thing I'm doing when I retire, bro. <laughs> well, I, I like too many of the modern comforts. I, you know, I'm only yeah. human, I like a lot of them. And I, I that's how it is. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. I, no, I, no, I, there's totally nothing I wrong I fucking love a good meal and I love a good coffee. That's yeah, true. That's, that's, what, that's true. what matters most. Ain't nothing me. wrong with that, dog. That's that's nothing wrong with that as well. But yeah. the more I go, the more the more I grow older, the more I'm like, yeah, that manly urge is real. I don't know if it's an yeah. actual manly urge, but uh, <laughs> it's just an urge. Yeah. I just I, really want to do it. Is there more so an urge that you want to have that life, or that you are you are not content with what is currently happening in life and the the cycle you're in? No, I think it's when's more it so from? like I am I'm very much you know I the urge is in the future for me. Like right. I, I am yeah. completely content with my life now and I'm very happy with where I am now in yeah. my life. And I would like to continue it for as long as possible. But I know there's gonna be a point where I'm probably gonna hit a wall where I'm just like, I need some change in my life. Cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, or cheese, you know? Or oh, cheese. You know, I need I need some change in my life. I need some kind of radical change in my life, whether it be for my mental health or whether it be just to like, if I'm still doing a creative job, you know, it's always yeah. a nice change of pace to like switch your environment. Right? It's, it's just nice. I, I don't know, I like the thought of just removing all complexities from your life. I mean, I guess I've done it once before, mm. uh, but that was like a very, very extreme version of just removing all exter external complexities. This is kind of like a lighter version where you're kind of yeah. just doing your own thing. You're living to, uh, you're just living, man. You're just you're uh, just uh, living out there. I'd be happy like camping for a month. It'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> the Would joy, you? Yeah, the joy I get from making a fire <laughs> and cooking a meal on that fire. Yeah, but think Oof. about it. If you lived in a van, you could do that anywhere you want, yeah. whenever you want. Yeah. yeah no, but as long as you're not in someone's backyard, you could do that wherever you want. Bro, that, doesn't um, that sound Am awesome? America has so much land, yeah, man. Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but I, I'm like, okay, I'd rather just travel around it. And I don't know. When I see these van videos, sometimes it just makes me depressed. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> I, I look at it and I'm like, wow. You don't have an espresso machine, you poor <laughs> yeah. thing. You can, ex you can install some one them, in the van. That's some, the first thing some of them you can look do. a lot better than others, but sometimes yeah. someone will show their van and it's like, it just looks really sad. I it mean, also looks lonely. Okay, so there are there are different levels. Like I've also I've also Listen, seen fucking like Justin Bieber's tour bus. That's see, that's where I'm like, all right, let's do this. Let's do this van. Like, can you can you show Justin Bieber's custom tour bus? This is where I can do the van life. Right? Yeah. This is like, and that's not a van at that point. But though. I saw this one where this woman had to like, she was like, I'm gonna shower what now. What the fuck? Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, I think I can do the van That's life. a hotel yeah. room, yeah, huh? I can do Yeah, the that's life. a moving hotel room. Yeah, I can do the van life. Oh, if it was this, yeah. I could live in that for the rest of my life. <laughs> like there's, there's like so many levels to it, but it's basically what you're comfortable with because I like, it, I've been recommended every level, which includes just, Guys who are living out of their cars in New York, <laughs> living and out just, of living out of their Mini Cooper. No, 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 like literally just living out of their cars. Yeah. And he's like, "Here's my apartment tour." And like, I think my favorite comment is just like, "Motherfuckers will be homeless in New York, but, but be like, but the food is really good though." <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> Motherfuckers will live literally live out of a shoebox, pay three k for know rent, but be me like off the most about New York when yeah. they fucking tell me about their water. I don't give a fuck about your water <laughs> and why it makes bread taste better. Stop fucking telling Wait, me. No what? one cares about your fucking I have, water. I haven't heard about this New York water. Thing. Oh my god! If you talk to a New York, they don't shut the fuck up about it. You're like I, New York is like we got the best bread in all of America. I'm like it's not that good. It's it's uh, you think it's better than it is. And like no no our water is scientifically proved. It's the best water in all this. And it's like no. Nope. I don't think so. I disagree. No, uh, like, I think it's scientifically, and I'm like, I, I, I. Have you been to Europe? No, but <laughs> New York, we got the. It's like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> damn. Did you notice this when we were in New York? Uh -huh. We'll never shut up about that damn water and why it makes bread taste perfect. I never, I never heard a New Yorker oh, talking about their water. Maybe I got lucky. Oh, I, I find it charming. I summoned them in the comments. No, I, I, I find, I found it charming at first comp. Yeah. Until you literally can't tell them their bread is not the best in the world. They won't. They won't. They won't. They won't take it, Khan. It's like it's like getting the hunger, Josie, bro. It's charming at first, and then it gets fucking annoying. You can't oh, tell no. them their bread's not the best in the world. They they lose it. They like they like self destruct. Of rage. We got the delis though. <laughs> I know you 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 go to a lot of parts in America, and you know some parts are more like the others. New York is one of like one of the cities that I think has. Its own kind of culture, which I think, absolutely, yeah, which totally. I think it it has a real unique identity to it, which is more than I can say for a lot of cities. 
uh, in America, which is something I really, really respect about New York yeah. uh, and mm. New Yorkers as well, which is like an identity, you know? Yeah, I, 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 like I kind of like dig that. Okay, but like, do you think that the whole van life stuff, because I there's so many van life influences, which uh, my brother's actually been inspired by. Oh yeah? He's got his own van. Oh shit. Um, and he travels around and it's fine. Yeah. It's nice, it's cozy. Dude, my dream car is a combi van. Oh really? Yeah, Volkswagen Combi Man. I, I really that, want one. What is? It? I don't know what he has, but it, it's it's good. Uh, and um, I, for him, it was like, okay, well, he'll work on it a bunch. But my, my dad helped mostly. Yeah. But uh, if I tell him that, he'll get annoyed. But it's true. <laughs> uh, but like for him, it's like, okay, that's more of a like, a, okay, we live in this place, we have a good time, then we maybe we do like week long trips in this thing. Yeah. And for that, I was like, that sounds like a really healthy way. But when I'm like, you're living out of it, and then I see some of these videos, and I'm like, is this just like? I don't know. Does it feel like the last option? Because it's like I don't know what to do. Like I'm. It, to me, some of these, some of these videos just felt really sad when I watched them. Why sad? Because they just look lonely. They look so lonely. Maybe but maybe they like, like that. that. Maybe they like but that. They were, like solidarity. And this one video, this one person, uh, they even said that they were like, yeah, the hardest thing about doing van life is. Uh, you know, it's the fact that you don't really get to talk with people or meet with people because you're always in a new place. But look, I installed a new shower in my van and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> but it's not, but like- you glossed over the most important pressing factor of maybe, you living yeah. in Maybe it's my perspective, but I've always looked at these like van people who live out of these vans and go traveling mm. the country or the world or whatever. Yeah. I've always seen it as like, well, isn't the point to like living in a van so that you can go see these new places and meet these new people? Like, okay. isn't the social aspect really tied in with your lifestyle? Yeah, but I guess some people maybe they didn't think about because a lot of, a lot of people never think about social life or being no. social. It's always an afterthought for everyone, right? Well, yeah, maybe maybe they jumped on the van life. They were like, I'm just gonna fucking van everywhere. Yeah, they maybe thought, wait, maybe they we have wrong, wait, how wrong do intentions. I main, how do I main, maintain friendships here? Like, yeah, how do yeah. I have like a <clears throat> existence? Because ultimately, we're all human and we all need to have friendships. Yeah, sure. we're social creatures. Even the most like even the biggest introverts will crave social interaction every now and again because. That just, is just how we survived yeah. and how we've evolved and how our brains are I could wired. Give up on the meat, no, I, I, yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't break it apart. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. You know, it's 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 uh, and that, and that to me would be the the biggest thing that I miss is like, how the fuck do I have any meaningful conversations or connections with people while I'm in a van? Yeah, I'm Discord. not in the same place. But that's like, <laughs> why wouldn't I just stay home? <laughs> yeah, but you can travel the world and, and also also have sometimes Discord you know. I know, I know it's not a big deal, but I, I feel bad when some of the van people, I saw this dude who had like three pets and I was like, I'm like, maybe you shouldn't have three pets in a van. I'm like, uh, I know I know you can stop. I know, the, pet, the pets out. get to uh, they go get to, fucking yeah, adventures. They get to go, yeah. they get to go crazy, but I'm like, yeah. man, I feel bad when- no, It depends what kind of pet as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, if it's a fucking- If it's three dogs, then I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I guess it also depends on the type of dog as well, I guess. Yeah. All right, going back to the gen going back to the generational thing. All right, I, it. I had a thought. Mm. Do you think every generation is destined to get more horny than the previous generation? <laughs> do, do you know what made me think this? So I was like- The internet? <laughs> Not just not just the internet, but uh, so I had I had I was uh, I was like on a trip and we had like a night where we were watching uh, like the biggest hits of the two thousands or whatever, mm -hmm. and a video of Tattoo came on. Do you remember Tattoo? Yeah, fuck yeah. All the things she said. Yeah, I fucking love that song. Do you remember how much of a shitstorm it caused because it just had two like girls in rain, like making out. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, this is the shit. Holy yeah, shit. And this. parents were like, no, this, we can't show this to the children. It's too <laughs> sexualized. It's too edgy. I don't yeah. remember this at all. It, it might've, they were huge in Japan. Yeah, it might've been just before, like, just before two Russian the, girls, right? Yeah, yeah, two yeah. Russian girls. Like it, it was, it was massive for me when, uh, when, when it came out. Um, and I, it came on, and then I remember looking at it. I'm like, fuck, this is tame as shit, man. This is this well, even even like a little bit after that, right? Like when we were growing up, like I remember being, you know, fucking. I don't remember remember how old I was. It was definitely before I hit puberty. Mm, and you yeah. watch fucking Christina Aguilera music videos and you're just like, yeah, damn. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't want my parents walking in on me on this. Like. Yeah. All right, then I think there's a, there's a very important question to ask to, to help answer your question, yeah. which is, do you think people are born with weird kinks or is it something that you're introduced to and you're like, oh. I think, you, I think it's all about introduction, right? You think so? Do you think that oh. like, if you were a feet person, yeah, right? Oh, I guess feet doesn't count because you'd always see feet. But if you were into something weird like, um, I don't know, what's a weird fetish? Armpits. 
No, you'd see that a lot. <laughs> You see armpits, like something you wouldn't see naturally. Like, uh, you know who's into armpits now? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but like, I said, like, you see armpits. Yeah, yeah armpits are weird. Oh, yeah, no, yeah I'm like, just gonna do this real quick. No, like, you could easily, if you were like a medieval peasant, oh, right? You were in like, oh, you were in 800 God. England. Yeah. You could easily see a woman open up a thing. You're like, actually, hold on a second. I fucking fuck with the armpits. But like, you would never be introduced to like uh, cucking. Right, <laughs> unless maybe it happened to you and you were like, hold on. <laughs> but like the normal person- I don't, would know, not, man. I don't know, man, you're in Japan. Yeah, yeah the yeah. normal person would not be introduced like NTR, right? Sure, sure. Most most people, okay, so I'm sure there's some situation where okay, mm. but yeah. most people wouldn't be introduced to NTR, right? <laughs> yeah. So the theory is that would, would you have been born being like, I am gonna like NTR at some point? Or yeah. is it like, I have to then show you and then you're like, huh. I don't even think it's about showing. I think it's just about like the the number of stimuli that you are subject to growing up all just kind of combined together into like clicking to be like, right, I like right. this thing. So then, so right? then, then, So like, okay, look, cause hypothetically think about it. If there was a person who was born, right? And right. they spent their entire like first 18, 20 he years. Comes out, he comes out with the mother's vagina. He's like, mama, I am a cuck. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what your first words were? Cuck. 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 Say, 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 say mama. Cock. <laughs> no, but okay, like, hi, okay, let's think about this hypothetically, right? right, right. right? If there was a child who was born, right? Yeah, and no for the first- In Japan, impossible. <laughs> yeah, not, not in Japan, let's say Europe. Uh, you know, they were born and for the first, let's say 20 years, they were born in a room and they spent their entire lifetime in a room, which has like little to no stimuli, mm. right? Like nothing in their room, like, you know, bare minimum human interaction that is deemed as normal, like no access to the internet, anything of mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Do you think they'll be able to develop fetishes from that? Uh, I don't think they no, would have, have no, uh, no mental capacity yeah. right. to function so, to be a human being. We, <laughs> so we answered your question. I think you, I think there is, you might be born with like maybe some brain chemicals, like right. leaning towards maybe taking in certain stimuli right. that so then, will let so lead then we'll, you So then we that? answer Gant's question then. Because yeah. Gantz yes. is the next generation. No, I think no. I just think the current generation is exposed to a lot more concepts. Yeah, and especially porn, with the internet, porn is very easily accessible now. And, and you know, back in the day, even like twenty years ago, you had to go to a fucking store and buy it. Uh, and even if you yeah. opened up like Playboy magazines like 10, 20 years ago, you wouldn't like see fucking you wouldn't, you wouldn't see, see like the weird shit that you see now. So right? I feel like it was more of a joined, like it was more of a communal thing where you're like, did you see the Playboy? You know, did you see the ex model who is the hottest, right? Yeah. Whereas now it's like, what are you into? And someone's like, oh, I like getting shat on. You're like, okay. Oh, okay. That's uh, no. and to you, cause you've had no exposure. We don't king shame. <laughs> yeah, you had no exposure to that. You're like, that's fucking disgusting. Why would you do that? Well, for him, it's like well, he's been exposed and then been well, I think yeah. that's I think that's also as a result of the fact that now like the internet is we just are not like- ready for the internet. Well, that's the we thing. Have been fucked the, I, because I agree people with go you. on the internet, and now we're so overstimulated that yeah. the stuff that we deemed as like fucked up 10, 20 years ago is just like normalized now. Yeah, do you so think, people are just looking for the you, next thing. Do you think right? by the time we die, there'll be studies like showing that the internet was just like we just fucking weren't ready for the internet? Like it, like I think that's. I think structure. there are probably studies that are have. Already, yeah, it's probably already done. That. I think it would be more helpful when it's like we're all dead, said and done. You know what I mean? When it's you know, when they can really sit back and look. Ah, oh, the whole life. Okay, let's have a look. See, see what happened when the internet happened. So, how did it come to him liking NTR? <laughs> let's find out. Let's dissect this brain. I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, I don't even think NTR. Like, I remember I saw like I saw another tweet where it was just this fetish of this person. I don't, I can't, I don't know if it was a guy or a girl just mm. in like full latex, just getting vacuumed to, uh, <laughs> seen have you seen that? <laughs> and I see that and I'm just like, like euphoric. how do you even, like, where does this even come from? Like, bro, that has to start with a porn addiction, right? No, because here's, I think here's some the people thing. people see like outfits and they're like, oh, that's fucking hot. Yeah, here's, here's the thing. Like some things I can, like I have a theory that, you know, most fetishes come from maybe how we were raised, something mm. to do with like what we experienced. Most of the sure. time I, th I, have a, I have a theory that we were probably like forbidden to like this kind of stuff or we were told this thing is bad. Mm. So like mentally we, we know this thing is bad and that's why it that's kind why of- porn does so well. Yeah, that's it's true. A, it's a, it's a, the ultimate taboo. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and I think for some people, 
breaking taboos is inherently attractive. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? exactly, exactly. So I, th I think that's where a lot of fetishes start, mm. you know? Um, being vacuumed in a latex suit, I'm like, how many- You're, you're missing the steps. How, how, <laughs> many, how many later? <laughs> I, I can connect the taboo dots. Yeah. I can't connect the vacuum suck dot, right? Yeah. Also, I imagine- I don't even know if that's taboo. I imagine point, like, like back in the day, the only people who could afford to indulge in fucked up kinks were like ultra wealthy, like landlords. They were like, well, my thing is that I love people being maimed or something. Or, like, you know, or I love people being branded. And that's yeah. my mm, kink, right? right, so right. Were, you know. And so back then it was, you know, it's probably only limited to like people who had money. <laughs> I think, yeah. I think, I think, I think like peasants were like, oh shit, I'm just trying to get by. I'm just trying to get some food. Are, are you saying we, fetishes are privileges? No, no, I, I think I it think is. They are. They are, fetishes bro, bro, are privileges. Just, okay, just, just think about the latex, the latex suit. Just How like, much is a latex suit? Yeah, think about that <laughs> the for a second. The free time to be able to think, hook that up. Yeah. Get, get, you, get to a get You a need gathering. to like, Probably 3D <laughs> print. Shit. You need you need to either learn to learn like to, to free, 3D yeah, print a device privilege. to be able to vacuum yourself, or someone has gone out and designed that for you, which you must have paid a premium fucking price. Buying, and buying a fucking doll. Yeah. Buying a doll that you can fuck is expensive. Yeah. Is I, and God forbid, we already know how much furries like spend on furry suit. They're fucking funding the economy by themselves. I hate how much this makes sense. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I can see why this generation feels like they're doomed when we hear about this kind of shit. It's, like, it's just like oh. wine, you know? Wine yeah. is a is a ex very expensive hobby as is jacking off sometimes. Look, look, yeah. when, when society has gone down and everyone is homeless, it'll be the furries having the last laugh because they'll be the <laughs> last group of people with money. I swear to God. They have all the money. They, yeah, they do, they, they do. We can make it through the harsh winter in our suits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, furry, furries for the most part. Yeah, it's like, they're, 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 sleeping, we, they're sleeping good. When we have the Great Depression part two, all we're gonna see on the streets are people in fur suits, man, because that's that's the only people with money left in the world. That's all I'm saying, man. Every furry I've met, they've been pretty chill as well. Yeah, they've been, well, they've been I, very I, chill. Every furry I've met has been like the chillest dude. <laughs> <laughs> They've been I'm very sorry. chill and uh, they have also uh, normally been uh, very financially well off as well yeah. to afford the hobby that they do. Yeah, Which for, they are, they prop up the artist <laughs> sphere online. <Yeah. laughs> it's a well-documented phenomenon. <coughs> Jesus yeah. Christ. Maybe, maybe like fetish, I, I feel like with the overexposure of the internet and mm. with the overexposure of new things, I feel like with this fucking latex suit, there must be- Why are you so- Obsessed with this latex suit, gone. I just like, because it sounds do want, absurd. Do you want a latex suit for your birthday? No, I'm just. <laughs> I just want to know. If you say I'm yes, sure. we're I, ending we're, the podcast. Uh, I don't really. I'm, I'll help him. I want to see where it goes. I'm just genuinely curious what the steps are. You know? Right. Like, like genuinely. Well, well, it's like that. It's like that famous video of the guy like who bought like the full latex like dog suit, right? Mm -hmm. and, what? Like, and like and like acts like a dog. He like sleeps oh, in a giant. Oh, I saw dog that. Cage yeah, 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 yeah. He's like a British guy, I think. Okay, first of all, I take offense to that. Yeah. <laughs> Probably English, first of all. It's oh, okay, straight. okay, my bad, my bad. Uh, no, what what, about wasn't that guy in Japan that wanted to be a dog? So he spent. I mean, that's the that's the least weird thing in Japan that's when it comes true. to fetishes, that's bro. True. There was a dude the who guy, married the a Hatsune DS. Miku fucking body pillow he as well. The DS so. as well. He married the DS as I well. I feel like, man. Like it's, it's cool that we're like open to cool things like that, but also at the same time, you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. So you just straight up should not marry a DS. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that that's a bad idea. And we shouldn't psyche. be congratulating it. Either. Yeah, we shouldn't be rewarding behavior yeah. like that. Ultimately, yeah. like I think it's funny and like it's, it's, it makes it for a good Buzzfeed article, but that's yeah. about it. Mm. I mean, I would prefer that you just be asexual at that point, you know? <laughs> Cause I can, I can kind of vibe with that. I can, I can understand that. Um, yeah. If you know, you know, some people are just wired that way. Uh, if you are falling in love with a DS, I see that as something that you're replacing an well, I mean, inanimate a, object. A, a, asexuality is not doesn't mean the lack of romance there. So they still, have, you know, you still have to be in a relationship. Hmm. Uh, you just might not be physical with it. So yeah. you know, mm. whereas a DS, you can't have either. So you just. Well, I, I, I see the DS as you replacing something that you couldn't get. You know. Because I mean, it, it's tough, right? Because I guess, how do you, how do you, like if, if, if Joey comes to us tomorrow and he's like, guys, I've fallen in love with my PSP Vita. First of all, great choice of console to fall in love with. Second of also, all- Also, it's called a PS no, Vita. Uh, here it is. <laughs> it's great. PS Vita? Yeah, they do amazing games on it. What are you doing? Like what? What are, all those amazing exclusives that were only on the PS well, Vita. Well, 90% of them never came out of Japan, so. <laughs> outside of Japan. Yeah, outside yeah, of Japan. Because it was a great console. Mm. 
Uh, and Japan fucking used it until like five years ago. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it was the only point, country. Point being, uh, sorry, yeah. PSP Vita, sorry, PS Vita, sorry, yes. Jerry, to insult you and your wife. Um, I think I'd be like, hey, Jerry, what's going on? Like, I wouldn't be like, dude, that's cool. I'm progressive. I'm like, no, Jerry, what's wrong? Like, there's something's gone wrong here. Yeah. And I, and I, you know, I, I think that's fair. No, we shouldn't be like, yeah, yes to everything. I think sometimes we should be like, wait, hold on a second. No. Yeah. Don't. This is a terrible, what has happened, Can you Jerry? please think about this? Can you talk to us? Yeah, Tell yeah. me what happened. Yeah. Um, and if you don't have that in your life, then there's another, there's an even bigger problem going on. Where were that dude's friends when he married the DS? Genuine question. What like, friends? Yeah, exactly. Who stopped him? Who yeah. was like, hey man, I really think this might not be a good idea. Or do you think his friends would have stopped him when his parents were like, first of, oh, all, first of all, he loves him. This is presuming that this was a legit thing and not like some kind of publicity stunt. If it's a publicity stunt, whatever. But if it is a real- uh, Apparently thing, it was legit. Okay, well that's- Like he went to the ward office and signed papers and oh shit. Oh my God. And they, they did it? Yeah. That's crazy. They would let a man marry a DS, but not let two gays marry. That's, that, I mean, that's all I'm going to say. That's crazy you can marry a DS. That's why society's doomed, brother. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I <laughs> don't have anything to add on <laughs> to that, man. That? That's just a fucking bombshell. And I'm just like- uh, like, it, like did yeah. he really get No, there's no way he legally got married. There I, must have been a ceremony. There's no way he legally- I don't believe- Guy, get on it. Guy, <laughs> guy. A, a, a guy, guy behind computer. Guy. <laughs> Look it up. Japanese man has married a character in a popular video game, taking her and his handheld game console on an overseas honeymoon. There's no way it's a real marriage. I, 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 I think it, it must just be like a publicity son. Okay, oh, wow. Wow. fourth be, picture. Why does it look like hey. young Pro ZD in that one picture? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, he does. <laughs> <laughs> on, the, on the one on the fourth one. Yeah. You know what I mean? It looks like a Pro CD fake character in one of his skits. <laughs> uh, yeah, where is the news on that? But at which point are you just like, you know, oh, I'm there's happy. the guy who married the body pillar. At which point are you just like, you know what? I'm happy that you're happy. You know, I, I, like, where do you draw the line in that? I guess. Um, which is... I draw the line when it's a Nintendo console. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where I draw the line. Honestly, did, did uh, whoever owns Hatsune Miku have to sign off on the marriage? Well, I think in the case of the DS one, it wasn't Hatsune Miku. It was a uh, oh yeah, it was it was a character from a or dating someday, simulator yeah. called Love Plus. Yeah. Because it was one of the first dating sims that was kind of AR technology. Because mm. with the DS, I think it had like a GPS or something, and you could li you could literally take this virtual well, it had the camera on it, right? Yeah, yeah. You could literally take yeah. this virtual girl on virtual dates, and it was one of Just, the very first of its kind. I know, maybe I don't know why I'm so adverse to the idea. I'm on, like, honestly, like I reckon, if I was the developer of that like visual novel, I would have absolutely been on board with it because that is amazing promotion but for the game. I, I, no, no. I'm so torn because at the same time, what if the guy's happy? Like if he's genuinely happy, what can I like? Is there a reason why he shouldn't do it? I'm so torn. Yeah, because I'm like, you shouldn't be allowed to do this. Well, no, I don't. <laughs> really. so if he's really happy and that made him happy. Who am I to rob that man of his happiness? Yeah, but there's other ways to be happy, you know? Yeah. That are not like impossible to obtain. But even. then I think about like <laughs> some friends I have where they, where I think they're happy and they drink, but I'm like, I think they could be happy other ways. It just <laughs> happens to be that drinking is what makes them happy right now. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So it's a, I'm really yeah. torn. Like you are entitled to your happiness. Yeah, sure. But, oh yeah, of course. But is that happiness at, like to a self detriment almost? Like is that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, he looks fucking happy in that picture. He looks very happy. Look at that. that oh, that's picture? not love. That was 2020 that's, as well. That's years I later. Remember, I remember this advert. Uh, yeah. He must be just going along with it. I, no, no shot, bro. I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe it's real. I don't, I don't, <laughs> no way. Did you see that Tinder added a pay to win function now? $500 a month. $500? Fuck. Yeah. If you are paying $500 for Tinder, you all have Actually, I lost. think I'd rather get you like marry you <laughs> to a DS. Yeah, this yeah. is like the different tiers now. <laughs> if, I, if, I knew, if I knew my friend was paying for that Tinder premium, I'm I'd buying like, him a DS. I'll be like, yo bro, it's I like, got this new girl. I swear down. It's just, and, and you know, that proves to a fact that Tinder, does not give a single fuck, uh, you know, and not not they have, but they always they always use this veil of like we actually you know we have had success stories. Yeah. Well, I, I fully believe Tinder has a, some success stories, but you know <laughs> some. Oh no no! I, yeah. have, I have a friend from high school who married. His yeah, Tinder yeah, 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 there's, yeah. Definitely, there's definitely it's, people it's happened, who yeah. you know, and and I, they use those stories as like, look, we we are we are offering a valuable function, mm. and at times they do, but then they pull shit like this and other stuff that they've done in the past where they've made it so that like you straight up just if you are an undesirable man, you just mm. won't be matched with anyone. Yeah, uh, because your score is your your 
in-app score is too low. That's so fucked up. Um, and then offering five hundred dollars to me is is, say, is symbolizing and willing to take advantage of people who are so desperate to meet someone else. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. It's not like this guy who's founded the yes and he's happy. You are actively taking advantage of, of the loneliest people with money to burn. Because listen, any single person on earth you meet up with, if mm. you tell them you spent $500 yeah. on Tinder, yeah. immediately unattractive. Yeah. There's no one on earth who's gonna find that attractive. Totally. I, I bet those, cap, those dudes are the type of dudes that will ask to split the bill anyway. But um, the point <laughs> being is that you're just wasting $500 a month to be lonely. It's it's it's. It's such a fucking awful idea. Uh, and I'm, it's fucking embarrassing. Yeah. I hope that they don't actually do it. And I hope it's just a publicity stunt. Yeah, please don't do it. Like this, you, you don't. don't the, the sad thing is, I don't think it is a pub publicity stunt. I think- They just want to make money. There's, it's, I think to, for them, it's a legit business move, which I, mean, I think unfortunately is going to work. They've obviously done research before launching something like this. They've yeah. obviously identified a market for this mm. and you know, a lot of people are clowning on it, but I think I think those people who are clowning on it were never going to be part of that target audience anyway. Yeah, you know, I, totally. I think there is that is a very specific target audience, yeah. and I think honestly, uh, there is a market for it. It's just now it's just out there in the open. There's always been a market for it for yeah people who it's, want to find partners who have a lot of money and partners who are willing well, to pay for that. When I first moved to Japan, I I, I had uh, Tinder Premium which allowed you to like unlimited. Cause I was just lonely. I just wanted to meet someone. Yeah. Oh yeah, because um, there was a limit to how many you there, there, there's right? a limit, right? And yeah. you know, I, to me, I was just like, I just want to have the highest chance possible of being able to fucking meet up with someone, right? Sure. Yeah. Um, and then I realized they oh, what they do is they constantly dangle ahead of you. They're like, wait, but like, if you had this feature, I'm pretty sure we can get you someone. <laughs> <laughs> you you like, are not a high enough rank. Yeah, yeah but I, I was never gonna do it. Cause I was like, I'm already paying fucking five, fucking dollars a month, fuck you. Yeah. I'm not giving you any more fucking money. Um, and they would just dangle these things in front of you and they would <laughs> add these superficial features that just did not help. Mm -hmm. Just straight up just did not help. Um, and you know, t Tinder has proven if you are of a certain desirability, uh, you will just not have success on Tinder. It's just yeah. Done, Cause you're, you've, you know, the, the app has fi figured out that no one wants to fucking date you. Yeah. Based on your profile for whatever reason. And, and no <laughs> amount of money is gonna f solve that problem. So you you know it's just cruel. It's so cruel. It's yeah. They're taking money to give you the illusion that you still have a chance. Yeah, it, it's yeah. You which know, is just <clears> fucked up. And not to mention all the fake profiles and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, and I very quickly gave up on Tinder um, in Japan because I was like, fuck this, this is stupid. What yeah. do you guys think of the whole dumb. like pickup artists? Have you have you heard of like oh, the God, whole pickup yes, artist yes, community? There's a community for that. Yeah, 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 a lot yeah, of YouTubers yeah. who are pickup artists. There's like, also a guy who's married who's a pickup artist, and there's one video where he made his wife watch his videos with him. Are you serious? And it was the most. It was the most painful <laughs> video I've ever seen in my life. What's wrong with people? Um, yeah, it was. Uh, I think Charlie did a video about it, and it was a. Oh, it was horrible to watch. Wait, so so explain this like pickup artist community to me. So it's a community of men, yeah. basically, men. of men. Uh, it's it's kind of an offshoot of let's say the guru community that I think there's right. a, that's like, you know, you, they have like, you have like the financial bros, you have the five ways bros. to please a woman. Yeah, kind of now you have right, like yeah. the, yeah, you, now you have like the <laughs> pick, like now you have like the pickup artist community, which is kind of that same kind of guru structure, but for lonely guys who want to learn so how what, to- So do they just like teach you pickup lines? They, no. they teach you how to be aggressive towards women normally. These dudes are just aggressive. That is, and you know, I if you cast oh, women them, love that. If you cast <laughs> the net out wide enough, you're bound to have some success, right? That's mm -hmm. and that's. I, I want to see a pickup artist in that community that just like teaches dudes like just terrible pickup lines that just never work. All of them, all <laughs> of them do that. So, hey, uh, yeah, from, a lot are, of are, are like, you from Tennessee? Because you're like, the only hey, ten I see. <laughs> a lot of them are like, hey, buy my course. You know? Yeah, a lot of them are oh just like, God. here, uh, let me show you how to pick up ten girls and get a. Get a number ninety percent success rate or some shit like that. These, I call this the you know, infinite yeah. pussy glitch. A, a lot of these guys who are making these videos are conventionally very attractive. So yeah. you already the the easiest thing that you can do to increase yeah. your chance of landing a date or a pickup is yeah. be fucking hot. Yeah, yeah. Which most of us aren't. <laughs> you know that's not how it how it works. Yeah, yeah. So you know the reason why these fucking shitty corn. If a if a if a guy who was not attractive and a guy who was very attractive said the same cheesy pickup line, there's going to be two very different. Results yeah, there. I need to see a pickup artist who is a oh, go. <laughs> yeah. then, then I'll be more convinced. It's called Tinder five hundred dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what you want to do is swipe crazy. 
<laughs> no, I, I get, okay. The reason I'm bringing this up, right? Is because I want to play devil's advocate, right? Okay. Because- You think men need it? Huh? We need this. I think, okay. I, uh, I, I guess I've never talked about this before, but- You need it. Huh? You needed a pickup artist in your darkest hour. Hell yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, okay. So like, I think the whole like epidemic pandemic or whatever of like the loneliness, like especially lonely men. Mm. I think, I think, I, I think a big problem is that a lot of guys who let's say are in the same situation as, you know, marrying a DS or getting attracted to, or getting very, very addicted to porn or getting, uh, having so much emotional connection to, fictional girls or, or or like pay to win. There's so many yeah. different ways to offset your loneliness because at the end of the day, it's easier to do that than it is to learn how to not be lonely, right? right. <laughs> and there is there was like there was like literally a book that changed my life. Uh and it was called The Game by Neil Strauss. Okay. And it is literally a book about some like uh uh an author uh, a writer who found himself in the pickup artist community. Uh, and I believe he's done a lot of like fucking terrible things now. I, I don't know what he's done nowadays. Mm. I know he, just, he doesn't have the best kind of like reputation now. Mm. But at that time when I was about 16, 17, when I discovered this book, mm. um, seeing this like story told about the whole pickup artist community and uh, all the techniques that they use and everything like that. Mm. What I got out of it was at the time, I was just a fucking lonely ass guy who did not know how to socialize. Mm. And reading that book, it didn't make me fucking aggressive towards girls or anything like that. It just gave me some like training wheels to work with, mm. to overcome. What and kind of tips do you feel helped you? Kind of concepts? Uh, just kind of like icebreakers to like, how right, do you right, right. open up a conversation without and not coming sound off- And not creepy. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. do you open up a conversation and not sound like a complete, asshole or a complete creep. Cause you know, I didn't you know fucking who needs know how that? to do that. Fucking Japan. Yeah, th that's the this thing, right? This country needs That's that. the thing. Yeah. And like, I, I started off like my university life kind of like going around this, some of like the things that I had read from this book, not as like a complete Bible, but just as a, I don't know what to do in this situation. So let me just follow the fucking flow chart of social interaction to mm. see, to give me like mm. the training wheels. And then from that, uh, after I just experienced the real world, that's what gave me the training wheels to really learn how to socialize. So like I fucking empathize with a lot of lonely guys out there because I was fucking, the, I, I was that guy, you know? Mm. I did not know yeah. how to go out. I Basic okay, but situations. here's the question then. If the $500 Tinder thing had come out when you were in that lonely period, when you were 16, 17, would you Assuming have taken- Assuming I was rich? Assuming you had <laughs> infinite money glitch, would you have done it? Fuck no. Fuck no. It's like pain for Paul. I'm asking God. I don't know, loneliness is fucking painful, man. It's painful. <laughs> it is. That's, why, that's why I'm asking this you, hypothetical. You, hypothetically, I would like to say that if I were, let's say rich, but yeah. I was, fucking lonely If you shit. could afford it. Yeah, if I could afford yeah. it. I would like to think I was a better, I would be a better man, but <laughs> I've been in some, like I've I've been in some fucking dark places in my life. Yeah, I yeah. cannot hold my hand on heart say, yeah, I'm, <laughs> guys, I, I would be above this shit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would be above all of the fucking things that we clown on because holy shit, there is nothing more like depressing than yeah. being starved of human connection, oh, yeah, you know? Yeah, for sure. And if you have no one to fucking judge you on your actions, what the fuck are you gonna care about, right? Mm. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, I, that's you exactly know, what I, this is marketed when to. I, yeah, when yeah. I see a lot of these guys who get very angry online or very, um, what's the word? Um, jaded. Jaded yeah. with like interacting. Spe spe normally with men approaching women. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's like, 90% of the time when I when I see these dudes who, who like feel burnt and I I've you know for whatever reason you can see how they interact with women, you're like, oh yeah. my god, you're just you just approached a random woman and just started trying to like you you didn't come into this with the same level of interest. Like you no, immediately no. are way more into this person than than they are into you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you gotta recognize that energy difference. You gotta yeah. recognize that like you're on a different level here and you you've won. You flat out just shouldn't approach random people a lot of the time. It just doesn't work. That's yeah. not how life works. You mm. cannot just see a, someone who's attractive and approach them. Sure, for some people it might work occasionally, but most people just <clears> don't <throat> fucking do that. Which is why I don't get in Japan the whole number culture. 
What's, just, the, what's the number culture? Number, it's basically like pickup artists, but in Japan. But like you see, if you go to like Shibuya or Shinjuku, any like big city mm -hmm. late at night, you'll see these like pretty young looking dudes, like probably, yeah, you know, in their twenties, just fucking walking up to women Everyone. and being like, Onesa, Onesa, do you want to, you want to go hang out? Do you want to go play? I'm like, no, you fucking creepo. Like no, no woman with any self-respect is going to be like, oh yes, random creepy dude that I have no mm, idea yeah. about. I'm going to go along and fucking hang out with you. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, I look at these guys like, and they're doing it like in inside trains and like at the train station, out in the street, in stores and stuff like that. And I'm like, when does that ever work? Especially in a country like Japan where stranger friendliness is close to zero. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. Yeah, and you're lot, making yourself look like an idiot. I think a lot of dudes don't know when to quit. Yeah. And that's a yeah. really, really important thing when you're talking to someone is knowing when you're like, you've clearly- I'm inconvenienced. You're, you're either yeah. inconvenienced them or you've gone too far yeah. or maybe you're making someone slightly uncomfortable. You can tell they're not interested. Yeah. And that's okay. If someone's not interested in talking to you, that is a, a human thing that everyone is entitled to. Plenty of fish in the sea, bro. Don't worry. Well, this is why people get so annoyed. Even if it's like friendship, it's like you are not entitled to someone's friendship. You're not mm. entitled to someone's time. You're not no. entitled to someone's capacity of emotion. For sure. And it gets very, I get really frustrated when I see this online when, when dudes are like, oh, that dead fucking woman didn't want to talk to me. It's like, well, yeah, she didn't have to. You approached her. You don't, she yeah. doesn't know you anything. You are not entitled to this. Yeah. Yeah. No one exactly. is entitled. And <clears throat> it, is, it is a very attractive trait to be like, ah, this person is clearly not vibing with me. I'm going to remove myself from the situation mm. because I'm clearly not very welcome in the situation. Mm. Just get out of it. Mm. And that's one of the most beneficial you can do as a human being is being able to read that energy and being like, okay, I'm clearly- You're saving their time and you're yeah, saving your own yeah. time. I'm clearly like, I'm not, I'm done here. Like, mm. This is like, and it's okay. You didn't fuck up. Yeah, it's fine. You, yeah. Didn't do anything you don't have to be friends with everyone. Yeah, you didn't, it's just not a slide on you. You are taking, don't fucking get like your pride get in the way. Mm -hmm. It's okay to sometimes like not be in the correct vibe. For yeah, sure. I, I I think <clears throat> I think honestly a lot of a lot of the example of these guys, unfortunately, they just has they just have not had no the quit. right role model to like teach them yeah, yeah. Yeah. what the boundaries are, what's like acceptable and or like not acceptable because a lot of people are fucking lonely, but not everyone who's lonely is also an asshole and uh, doesn't yeah. know what boundaries are, right? Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just- It's a small minority that are these assholes. That these yeah, unfortunately it's the most vocal and Absolutely. the ones that get mm. a lot of attention. I mean, it's not just that, it's just like, there's there's a lot of assholes you see on, especially like, not just like pickup artists, but what are, like, what's the latest thing? Like and fucking door-to-door -door salesmen and shit oh like God, that yeah, as well. Yeah, Wait, what? Door-to-door <laughs> -door salesmen are fucking floating They're with- back now on TikTok. Yeah, they're back. They're uh, back. Selling like solar panels or other stuff and, that, and like, there's dudes who are like, do not do not leave the property unless you have asked eight times at their door. That's and, harassment. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. What the it's, fuck? Yeah, these people, yeah. it's like, they're just like, they're like, the the concept is, and this happens in relationships or sales or whatever it is, it's like overwhelm someone to the extent where they physically, they don't know what else to do other than to cave into what you say. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's like the whole concept behind all of these, whether it be pickups or door-to-door -door salesmen, just be so intense, so assholy that they have- They no, can't they, say no. That they're mm. like, they feel the only recourse is to then agree to whatever it is the fuck you're trying to do. Like, okay, fine, fine, fuck it. I'll buy a fucking solar panels, fuck off. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's it's insane what the culture is like. That's insane, yeah. It's yeah. Fun. Again, probably someone selling a course on how to sell. <laughs> Fuck's sake, why, why are there so many people selling courses? Because courses- Because <laughs> it's course, easy to do. <gasps> courses is a fantastic way of milking someone for money. You can be like, buy step one, buy step two. Yeah. Ooh, you're nearly at the best club right now. You're nearly at the top tier. It's, just, it's a trick, it's all this time. Fucking, yeah. look, at, look at religion. You know, there's a, a very, very famous religion that I won't say because we don't want to get cease and desist, but uh, that always does it, that, always, that does this. They're like, oh, but you need to pay $50,000 for the reading material to go to the next level. Yeah, courses are easy for a lot of people because you're making a profit without actually delivering or selling they, anything they learn, physical. They learn from the best universities. Yeah. At the sell end the of books, the day- Sell the books, the $200. Yeah, Bro, at that the end of the, the day- the biggest fucking scam of all time, aside from student loans themselves, which is- What are you gonna do, read another book? Nope, this is the only book you can read. <laughs> Like what if humbling. what if we uh can what if we just pirate the book? Can you can you do that? So wait, were you guys forced to buy certain textbooks? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah but I, I got in trouble one time. Did I tell you about this? I think I might have mentioned it on the podcast. I had a I had my friend bought the book and I asked for it and I printed off all the sheets that I was using. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I took them into the exam and they told me I couldn't have it because it wasn't the official book. And I'm like, it's the book. It's yeah. just in a really shitty format. And they were like, 
you have to buy the book. And I was like, oh, because my course- <coughs> I don't buy the fucking book. My it's course, you were, you were forced to, I think we only maybe had like two textbooks for the entire three and a half years I was mm. there. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't buy it, they were kind of just like, I'll just go and buy it eventually. But oh, like, nah, they weren't bro. like anal about they it. They had this, we, so we did engineering and one of the most important things of engineering was the, um, it was the, uh, like the thermal capacity of each material. And they, mm. they, would, they would have a book that they would release each year with like the properties of the materials. And mainly it was the thermal capacity it was. Mm -hmm. um, and every year they would update it. And, I, and I, 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 I was curious, I was like, what's the difference? And between two years, it was like three materials have been slightly updated because they right. had better readings. But it was like, I don't feel like this has any bearing on my exam. Like, I don't think that I should be forced <laughs> to buy the new version every year, fuck you. Yeah. I'm buying the new fucking version. <laughs> I didn't have much money. I'm not paying $200 for a book. No fucking way. Yeah, that's pretty absurd. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of remembering how, because I didn't have to buy one. I had to buy four or five, I think. Yeah, I, yeah that, that, was just, that was the main one, but they, they tried yeah. to get me to buy other stuff too. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not buying that shit. Oh fuck, I, I fell for that shit, man. And I, I, I like, use one of those textbooks, I think. And oh. the rest, um, I kind of, I'm trying to remember how how did yeah. I how did I learn? I well, some, some how did I learn? You know, I learn? One piece is great. It really taught me a lot about pirating and being a pirate. <laughs> and I think that I, I found that very useful. There is I, such thing as a good pirate. You know, I think that one piece is a lot of core messages that I took to my university years. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, um, but don't but, ever pirate. It's very bad. <laughs> but uh, was it was I going to say? Do you think you learned shit in university? I learned what I didn't want to learn. <laughs> That's the thing, I, I, I always tell people, I'm like the most valuable thing you can learn sometimes is learning what you don't want in life. Yeah. What you you know categorically you don't want. Do you, do you I, I wouldn't have started YouTube if it wasn't for the stuff I learned at uni. Me too. Because I learned video editing at uni. Well, I didn't learn that. I fucking learned to learn the hard way. Fucking you learned, you learned boom, video boom, editing boom, in boom. university? Yeah. I'm and, uh, fucking lucky. I learned yeah. it myself. Yeah, and, uh, me too. Uh, fucking uh, Sony Vegas. Yeah, YouTube Sony Vegas. Tutorials. And it was all fucking COD tutorials yeah. all the time. No, we, we, had, we had Final Cut and like we were learning guy, video huh? editing for one of our courses. And that's when I got interested in making videos. What did you, you learn in video editing? Out just of well, I mean, it was basically just These like are cut guys. Well, yeah, honestly, like it was, it was, it was, it was a great way to get my foot in the door. But yeah. like, obviously, the rest of the shit I had to kind of experiment, learn right. myself. But before yeah. then, like, you'd open up Final Cut, and I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. It's yeah. too much shit. But like, I learned like it's very simple, just like you know, cut, hmm. uh, you know, simple effects, all that kind of stuff to like make it look a color correction, all that kind of stuff. And then yeah. the rest of it was just like, okay, I'll just teach myself. I think I learned how to do exams in university. I didn't I'd, learn how to do that. I barely passed, bro. Oh, you barely passed, dude. I think I think by the end of my uni, like I had like, I think I had just passed the bare minimum to graduate by like six points or something, which was like nothing. Yeah. And I got that paper. I was like, I, I learned the entire meal deal menu combination. I went through all of it. There's oh, a, there's true. A Tesco Express on our campus. I learned where every pub was in the campus. Yeah, I mean, I, I think every university student yeah. learns that, especially. I'll say it. Oh, the most viable thing of all. What? Social life. How to socialize. That That's true, valuable. actually. That was the most valuable that thing. That is true. That is, that is true. That is true. University, I mean, like- I, you I know. was just not social before. And I, I think that I underestimated how doing my job now, and even when I do things that aren't entertainment and not like YouTube, but I'm doing like just straight business talks or trying to discuss things. B being able to pick up on social cues and, and knowing confidence in social situations is genuinely an invaluable thing that you need in life. Okay. Uh, and I think university really kind of gave me the kickstart to get there. Because mm. uh, you 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 rock up and it's like battle royale social simulator. Yeah. You're like, well shit, I gotta start making some fucking friends or I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fucked in this. Well you're also royale. thrown into like the deep end of the independency pool, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're just mm -hmm. like, oh well, there's no like teachers there for you to like, you know, make friends for you, or like there's no parents always like hovering but behind you or anything like that's that. It's also important because that's the last time in life you're gonna get a shared experience with everyone around you. That's true. Uh, after that, no one has shared experiences. It's gone. Mm. It's the one time where you kind of get to make friends for free. You have this one joining factor where you can you can kind of all relate to, mm -hmm. uh, and that's gone. Uh, so then <laughs> it's it, you don't realize it, but like it's kind of the training wheels for being social, mm -hmm. and it's really the last chance you have because yeah, some people learn it in high school, but a lot of people don't, and that's that's fine because mm. you're you're worried about other shit like how how to fucking spell English words correctly, which I still didn't figure out. Um, so, you know, I think it's it's important to make sure you uh, learn how to get social skills. And for me, that's what university was. That's and where what I the learned. What the fuck did we learn in high school or secondary school? I don't know, just how to exist. 
of exist. Existing's hard. I found a lot of like the hobbies that I Existing still- Existing was easy back then. Yeah, for, right? for me, high school was important because I, I found a lot of the hobbies that I still hold dearly to my heart. Like, I think it was the first step, like, as you said, like it's kind of the training wheels to figure out, start to figure out, okay, who am I exactly? You know, and then I'm a fucking DJ. I'm a fucking DJ. I'm a fucking DJ, baby. You know, it's, it's the first time you really start having some form of responsibility, which is, you know, grades come into the question. Mm. In yeah, you don't have any grades. Really. You gotta go to school every day, yeah. you go to school, right? And then now, now you're like, okay, well, shit, I gotta worry about this thing. I have to start actually managing my time. Mm. You yeah, start, you start learning really core cool concepts, and then I feel like after that. They, they, learning social skills are being encouraged to do so is really a, a side fact a lot of the time because mm. teachers don't care either. Because they're like, well, I don't fucking care. Why don't yeah, give a not, fuck about this kid being social? It's not my responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> I got to teach him math. And then you get to university, you're like, oh shit, I have to learn this for myself now, otherwise I'm going to be lonely. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like teachers care even less in university. Oh, uh, they, they don't give a fuck at no, all. It's, no, it's no. not their responsibility. It's, you're, it's, you're it's, their, it's their side project on the research project your, that they're actually doing. Yeah, it's like you, you're the adult. That's the, it's the at last adult training wheels. It's like, yeah. oh, you're actually an adult, but okay, hold yeah. on. Now, hold on. <laughs> Let's give you three years to figure it all out. Don't, we don't want you rushing into the world being dumb, all right? Yeah. Oh, it's like, you know, but, meanwhile, yeah. other, other kids, they go fucking straight into it. I have mad respect <laughs> that they were able to make that yeah. decision and be like, fuck it, I want to work. University is like, you're an adult. Well, are you really? But no, you're an adult. I swear, I swear down. And yeah. then you go to the adult world and you realize, oh, they were fucking lying to me. Yeah. <laughs> they were giving me adult easy mode. And then the people who don't want to do that take a gap year. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, like I'm not ready yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, dude, I thought I had bills figured out in university. I had like two bills to pay. I was like, this shit easy, bro. Paying bills is easy. Mm. And then nowadays I'm like, oh shit, okay, I'm juggling all these things. All right, I yeah. gotta pay all these bills. Holy fuck. Yeah. How much is my health insurance? What? Yeah. Oh, do you know what I learned in university? I fucking hate housemates. <laughs> really? Yes. I like housemates. Oh, you like housemates? I kind of miss not having a housemate, yeah. I, I suppose I, I have Sydney. I don't really count Sydney. Well, that's not a housemate. Is a housemate. Yeah, she is a housemate, what but- she, What do you want to choose? That is a fucking housemate. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, no, that's okay. different. No, no, it's different. It's, no. it's a housemate that you bone sometimes <laughs> and you go to dates with, all right? All right. <laughs> yeah, that's already quite different. <laughs> I think a lot of housemates did that in you know, my university yeah, yeah, life. Yeah. Sometimes you bone your housemate. Right? Yeah. But this is 24 seven boning committal and no other bone in the lab. Okay, the point is that, I mean, you kind of get the same things that pop up. It's a bit different, right? Because you, right. you know, but th there are the same things that pop sometimes maybe. <laughs> Uh, maybe Jerry, you're you're the bad housemate. And you don't do your dishes. Maybe Aki has to do them for you. Sure, you know, you know what I mean. Housemates is where I learned. Oh, not everyone does have the same shared experience. Yeah, and that was everyone's... my first rude awakening to be like, I there is this basic etiquette I thought I was brought up in yeah. mm. in a certain household, and this person doesn't fucking do it. And yeah. you either got to teach them and be an maybe asshole, like and the guy, conflict, like the guy who had the wine glass things. in the underwear drawer, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there was I a fork actually. Yeah. Yeah. Or a spear, I can't I remember. A fork, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe you didn't know things as well. Was there anything that you didn't, you were like shocked to learn when you got to university? I feel like I'm a good housemate. I feel, I, I, I was, that's what they all say, guys. <laughs> the only thing I did was take up freezer space because my, that was my mother I, taking up all the freezer space with uh, takeaway boxes. Well, they probably thought the same thing. They were like, this motherfucker taking up the freezer space. Okay, what? there's a difference between <laughs> taking up freezer space and leaving my fucking fork in your underwear, I, used underwear drawer, okay, okay yeah, Joey? That's fucked up. Yeah, that's fucked up. <laughs> I, I got pissed off at this one guy he used my pizza tray, which admittedly wasn't expensive. It was like a pound. <laughs> but he used my pizza tray to cook a whole fucking chicken. And it was just, there was just charred bits of chicken that I could never get off this pizza tray. And I thought, what a cunt. <laughs> he didn't even clean it. He left it there for three days. So the chicken was fused with this tray. I got so annoyed because I was like, man, have you no respect for other people's property? Come on, man. I just like, I, I got to a point where I just realized if I buy milk, I need to drink this as, or use this as fast as possible because it is no matter- oh, I gave up on milk and bread. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I had, to, I had to buy the tiny milks, which was a thing in the UK. I love this thing. Oh, yeah. I wish Japan did this. Well, they kind of do, but it's not the same. Yeah. They have like, they used to have like the two, two, three liter big jugs of milk that- Sure, sure. Get. And they had the one liter. And they had like the, the 250 or 300 milliliter little cartons of milk. It's so fucking Well, awesome. Japan has like the 300 mil Cons. But that, I, I, I okay, I, I hate the fucking cardboard boxes for milk. I like the plastic one, the one we had in the UK. Yeah, I love that. Those are pretty good. It was good. so nice because you can also pick it up and see how much you have left. I don't yeah. Know, I just, I don't like, can you pull it up? UK milk cartons. 
They're so good. I I really really hate the <laughs> American we, and Japanese. Are, are we fucking just <laughs> no, shouting out good. milk cartons now? Shout out to <laughs> milk Yo, cartons. This one. Look at this one. Look at this one down Yo, here. Yo, UK. No, 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 below. No, 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 below. It's it's the below, plastic below. one. Oh, oh, those ones. Yeah, yeah, those ones. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah we had those in Australia as well. Yeah, yeah. you guys learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We taught you right. Yeah, we we. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the mini one. The mini one. The mini one. Yeah, the mini ones. Yeah. This is the best. The mini one. This is my favorite one. Oh, the, the 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 bottom. No, no, no. Yeah, left, no, no, left, left, not, left, left, left of that. Left of that. Left, Extra. Left that, of that. No, 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 no. Yeah, you're so close. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 left, no, left, 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 left. It's left, mini car. That one, yeah. <laughs> that one. That one. <laughs> that one. Yeah, 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 that one. Yeah, look at that thing. Yeah, yes. that's a mini one. Look at it. That's that's a tiny one. That's. That's little little, little baby one. I love this, but bread bread. There was no mini bread, unfortunately. No bread bread for one person. In the UK, you know, because when I go to America, I'm like, why does your bread last three weeks? Yeah. What's going on here? Because in the UK, it would last a week if you're lucky. Mm -hmm. You know, day three, it's already like starting to be pretty hard. Uh, yeah. So, you know, and that's that's the stuff with the artificial uh, <laughs> stuff kind of preserving it. But the really fresh bread, day two is donezo. Why are we raving over milk cartons, bro? Because like just... <laughs> what a fantastic design, really. <laughs> I think we should really, you know, encourage designs like this to be more commonplace. Yeah, plastic, but I've already given up, bro, on, on microplastics. I'm done, bro. It's already over for us. At least let me enjoy my fucking milk cartons. Me stopping it isn't gonna save the fucking turtles at this point. In Japan, they they recycle the milk carton or the, the the plastics. Okay, yeah, to be fair, like Japan is kind of like hypocritical in that sense because they're I like, oh, all of the milks are in paper so that we can recycle them, but we're also gonna individually wrap every single piece of gum in a packet as well. Yeah, with and, fucking... and then what happens to all this plastic in Japan? Uh, in most places, burnt. Yep. So fantastic. Yes, it's burnt, made for electricity, but it's still burning it. So I'm like, let me have my fucking milk carton. But stop, stop wrapping the bananas. I will, I will, I will, I will take not wrapping bananas for milk cartons like this. You want to get rid of the wrapping of the bananas? I don't need a plastic enclosure for the bananas. Oh, I thought you meant like the skin. No, 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 Whoa, no. <laughs> what the hell? Unskinned bananas. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. they plastic bag bananas Un here. I don't want that. Un unpeeled bananas? Are you selling unpeeled bananas now? What? I think I was a good housemate though, other than my incessant shouting. Um, but that's a pretty big bad one, so it's fair enough. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty, that, that, would, if, if that would I, piss me off. If I was waking up for, if I was hungover and I just heard, ah, ah, I would want to kill my room. I ask my old house, man. I'll be, I'm gonna ask right now. Hopefully, hopefully she replies. I'll be like, what was I? What was the, the strong points what, and bad points? Was I? <laughs> what was my, hello. Yeah, I only had housemates uh, for like what three months maybe when I first moved to Japan. But that's mm -hmm. because when I first moved to Japan, I didn't have like my own place and it was a lot harder to like get your own place yeah. before moving to the country, right? So I moved yeah. in with a friend of mine, two friends of mine, uh, which I'm sure if you know the history of my channel, you know who they are. But um, yeah, uh, I didn't like it. I, yep. I I realized I was like three months was more than enough to be like, oh, I don't like housemates. Even if you have friends, yeah. you don't necessarily get along well with them when you're living together constantly. Yeah. Also, it beats that no other feeling than going downstairs at like 9 p.m. They're chilling, you're like, what are you watching? Like Lord of the Rings, I'm halfway through it. I'm like, oh, I'm in. Oh yeah, I had moments like that too, like, but fuck yeah. <laughs> I had moments like that too, but it was also just kind of like, oh, you know what? I kind of like my own privacy sometimes. And like just Me having too. your own room and is that, not that's, the same. That's, that's the big difference because I am i was never that guy who just saw people watching a film and was just like, oh yeah, I'll join. Mm. Because to me, I was always in the mood of, ah, I'm not really in the mood to watch this right now. Maybe I'll watch it some other Bro, time. Bro, I had air games to play. Like, I, <laughs> I, 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 I'd rather do that. You guys just don't want to be social. That's what I'm hearing. No, no, you, no. I do want to be so, social, you want social but on your parameters. I want to be social. Yes, actually. Yeah. Yes, this could be an introvert. I want to be, be social <laughs> when I'm ready to be social. I'm yes. never going to say no to Lord of the Rings, especially if my boy's watching it. I'm like, all right, all right, okay, come on, let's go watch. I just like- you tell me if I wasn't like, if, yeah, if you walk downstairs and trash mm. it off, I'm watching Lord of the Rings. I'm halfway through it. Wait, which one of you hasn't watched Lord of the Rings? It was fucking you, I knew it was you. <laughs> well, we did, we did watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah, I know. I have, so I no, we, we have now watched yeah, Lord of the Rings. We did this in Hawaii. One, we, well, someone put Lord of the Rings on one of the hotel rooms and we all just stopped and started watching. Oh yeah, no, we I'm, watched I'm, Return of the King. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. gonna be real. If, if I had my own room, I probably would have fucked off. Yeah, it was in Gant's room. We all went to Gant's room for some reason. And then Gant, I was- in, Because I was we were gonna have drinks and yeah, then you we put on Lord out. of the Rings. And I'm like, well guys, oh, by yeah, the way, this is the third movie and I haven't watched either one of the like the previous ones. And you guys were like, don't care, bro. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah, a problem, we, not yeah, a problem. We go out, that's right, we all met in dance room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I put on TV and I was flicking through the channels. I saw Lord of the Rings and then we all were like, five of us, we were like, <laughs> let's hang oh, out. Let's just watch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, Bang a movie. Like, I was like, like, guys, I haven't seen that. And you're like, 
Don't we're care. like, well, they're gone. There's never a bad time to watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I, think, I think even watching them out of order is okay because they're just such banger movies. Oh. In order, out of order. Are they? Is that yeah, a take? 100%. Is that, we were like, who cares? Like John, Wick, is like John Wick, right? No. Like <laughs> exactly like John Wick, actually. Yeah. Lord of the Rings stands the test of time, gone. Point being, I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. I was a great housemate, generally. <laughs> I was a fantastic. I just don't <laughs> believe people who say that, you know. Dude, I, I I cleaned the most, which I feel is the the hardest part of being a housemate. Oh, I I cleaned the most as well. Um, um did you clean? Who yeah, clean? of course I did. Yeah. Mm. Did I, you have a cleaning believe, rotor? Clean. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was the fucking uh, maid of the house, bro. I don't believe it. I don't buy. It. I, uh, I don't. My buy other, it. my other. Okay, we're we're in, we're in a fucking true crime investigation now. I, I heard that stutter in the voice. <laughs> Yeah, I got clean. Psychoanalyze. JCS pauses right now. What we have here is a man who just got caught in a lie. Notice that his eyes looked up to the left, inciting that he might have potentially lied. This when you play LA Noir once. <laughs> the detective will now realize this lie and continue the line of investigation in this direction. So Joey, we know you didn't clean. Uh -huh. you, you can, you, you're like, we have the evidence, right? Sure. You, you can, you can, we know you didn't clean. We, yeah, saw, we, didn't know we you, saw the we, crime scene. We, we, have <laughs> the, we have the roommate's testimony right here, Joey. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> we it'll have be in the other room. Yeah. They, they ratted you out. It'll, it'll be easy on you just to uh, admit now. <laughs> we have an anonymous tip from someone. Listen, Joey, we can help you out if you just confess. If you just tell us you didn't clean that much, we can, do, we can help you out. No, I did actually clean though. How do you know? Okay, what do you look for? In, what would you look for in a good roommate then? Aside from obviously companionship, because hopefully you're living with people that you like, which is the bare minimum of what you would hope for in a good roommate. Mm. Um, I mean, honestly, if, you're, if your roommate's kind of in the same friend group as you, it's chill. Cause you can all just hang out. And yeah. then when you go out, they can join you. It's just good vibes. <sighs> it's just, what, okay, one, one, one other thing as well, which is an unfortunate reality. I've never been in a flat where you know if it was like more than five people there would always be some kind of drama around some bills getting paid and i think that oh, was yeah, I, I, I that and i think that is the fucking massive thing where mm. that is like the friendship ender of like how okay you can get along perfectly well with someone you can you can fucking chill with them but as soon as this kind of like financial response responsibility comes into play mm. that is what I found to be friendship enders, not for just people that I had roomed with in the past, but from what I've heard from people around me as well. Mm. Um, Cause unfortunately some people are just really fucking irresponsible. And I think yeah. being roommates with someone is a big tell about you can, are you cool with someone? You, you can be totally cool with someone, but they can also just be a completely like irresponsible person in some things that now is affecting your life. I think that's you know the, I, mean? I think you just described why content creator houses just don't work out in the long run either, right? Because like, I feel the same phenomenon happens where it's like, oh, I really like this other person. I like making content with them. I, I respect them as a creator, blah, blah, blah. But it's very different living with that person where you see everything else, right? And they might not be as like mature yeah. or right in the head, yeah. As they make themselves out to be on camera get and then- Get a bunch of egos in a room. E to get a bunch yeah. of egos in a room and then yeah, it all fucking crumbles apart. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think it was my university and I think even more so my London experience because London fled, <laughs> London shared flats and houses are, mm. was such an awful fucking experience for me that I was like, I think I'm good. Yeah, you had a horrible experience, which I think easily could define how you view it. I think that's fair. Yeah, well, it only takes one, man. Yeah, I think it takes just one bad neighbor yeah. or one bad roommate to be like, I'm, I'm fucking done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck this. I'm, I'm, I'm fucked. <laughs> I'm fucking done. I'm only living with my life partner, and uh, that's that's pretty much it for roommates. Yeah. Um, though you, I, you figured it out, man. You cracked the code. Though I do like to have fun with the boys, just not always living with them constantly, but. You know, maybe some people do actually like roommates. It is kind of scary where like every time we go to America, like how many, like especially creators ask like, oh, so do you guys like live in a house? Yeah. Like in a, what in a creator more, house? What scares me more isn't how many creators live in a house. It's how big some of the content houses are. Well, yeah. a lot of them fail. I mean, a lot of them are destined to fail almost because you just can't have that many egos in, a, in, a, in one building. I mean, mm. even with some creators that I'm totally chill with, it's not even about egos, but when you have fucking, nine people in a house. I'm like, this, this is- That's a party. This is too much. Yeah. This is too many people that I am constantly around. That's even a if hotel, I'm bro. Totally chill with everyone here. Um, 
and that's too much to manage for me. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, in fucking in a in a city like LA, in a city in a major city like New York, sometimes you just have to room with someone. Yeah. Uh and I think I learned early on that I guess it's just worth moving out uh, to find someone more affordable. If only you could afford it though. And that's <laughs> why people are doomed. <laughs> in this day and age. God, this really has been a Duma podcast, hasn't it? It's been a Duma podcast as equally- what a, way, what a way to end the year. All we've talked about this podcast to end the year of 2023 off is talk about fetishes, uh, doom and overstimulation. Let's talk about something nice to end this year off before we call it today. Swag what's, money. What's, what's, the, <laughs> what's, what's the best thing that happened to you guys this year? Let's, let's, let's have some positivity to end things off. Hemorrhoids. <laughs> 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 You're gonna get a hemorrhoid. Hey, you gotta, you. I mean, you gotta get the hemorrhoids, man. Yeah, there's gonna be an arc on your hashtag. Has gone got hemorrhoids. The hemorrhoids arc. I still, I still do not have hemorrhoids. Hemorrhoid jack. It's gonna have hemorrhoid jack. King, King Giga beat beat hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a coughing coughing baby versus hydrogen bomb. <laughs> hemorrhoids versus Giga. <laughs> which one's which? We'll never tell. Uh what is the best thing that happened this year? This year's gonna be a blur. I don't know about. We've How done you so think? much, right? So it's like kind of hard to- I will say- I, I mean, did, you I, had your Thai wedding. Yeah. Oh hard. yeah, that was this year. That was January. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you guys got to experience my home country. Yeah, we saw Thailand. Fuck, that was so much fun. I'm still salty about the Pad Thai that you paid for. <laughs> I'm salty after I heard about it. <laughs> no, it, wasn't, it wasn't bad though. And you, I definitely could have had better though. You guys came to Australia as well, right? Yeah, I fucking love Australia. Yeah, um, and we and we went to Wales for the Europe tour, so we all visited each other's home countries this year. Well, oh, we, went, we went to Cardiff. Oh, Cardiff. Yeah, it's, Cardiff. it's not really Wales. It's. It, I it, mean, you guys went to Melbourne. It's not. Do, like do, you know, do you know my traders. favorite? Uh, my favorite memory from Cardiff mm. is when we went to the castle. Yeah, and we met that Welsh guy who seemed. Oddly proud of how many times- Oh, the dude's standing in, the in front of yeah, the castle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this tour guy was like, oddly proud of how many times this castle had been taken over and stormed. And, <laughs> and he's like, it's I, still I, standing I, there. <laughs> yeah, it's that, Wales is just that Goku meme where he's on fire and smiling. Yeah. Like that is Wales. It's like, hey, we're all, we always get fucked, but we'd never leave. Because <laughs> I think, you know, it, around them at that period, there was a lot of countries that got taken over, especially in Europe, right? Yeah. And, so, and Wales the one that was like, no, we, we lose, but we're staying. <laughs> and they just kept getting fucked for millennia. And they were like, we're still here. What do you want? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> It was pretty funny just how excited he was. Cause it, like he found out we were doing the show in Cardiff and he was like, yeah. oh, next time you should do a show in the castle. And um, I'm like, what? It could fit like 60 people in there. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I it'd mean, be great. It, it would be fun to do a show in a castle yeah. um, or just anything in a castle. Castle is just cool. Let's fuck in the castle. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what else. I mean, we did so much traveling this year and a lot of new countries as well, which was always hype. No, I just had a lot of fun. I, you know, doing all the cool streaming stuff this year, but it was hard for me. Mm. Just doing all that fun, crazy projects that I've been working on the year before. Yeah, it was, was the do. charity auction. Charity this auction year. was a huge hype for me. That mm. was amazing. Yeah, that was really. I really genuinely cool. like. It's been such a blurry year that I was like, was that this year? Or was that yeah, was last year? year? Was this year? Fuck. It was in June. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're getting to that point. Yeah. <gasps> no, I, I swear to God. Sometimes I don't know if years are just getting longer for everyone, or if just three months feels you like mean shorter. <laughs> They're getting shorter, right? Because 2023 felt like it went by like like that for me. But also three months ago feels like a year ago for me, almost. That, that's because we're doing a bunch of shit, <laughs> can't Three months ago, we were like on tour. Yeah, not even two months ago. <laughs> it was October, bro. Shit. No, sorry, no, you're right. It was September. No, it was My three bad. months. It yeah, was three it was months. September. It was three months. My bad. My yeah, bad. that felt like a year ago, man. Oh, I just. <laughs> I mean, the US tour was a year ago. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Which that's feels true. like five that years ago. That feels like five years ago. Yeah. I don't know. Are years getting longer or shorter? I don't know. But this year felt. It kind of felt like a blur, but it also felt. I don't know. There was no good games this year. <laughs> okay, okay. No good anime I'm kidding, either. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Go there's there's no good anime, no good games. It was all a blur. Shit move. There were no, shit. no games this year. There were just no games. Just none Sorry, at man, all. I interrupted your thought. None I just thought it was a funny moment. <laughs> I, was trying, I was trying to think. Well. well, maybe Connor, if you played Baldur's Gate three, uh, and not I the fucking you. Suica game, game of the year, you'd uh, you'd think that uh, maybe, there were yeah, good games. I mean, right. there were good games this year because uh, Honkai Star Rail came oh, out this off. year. <laughs> 
It was a weird year. It felt like a year of continuation. I think that was the theme of this year. Yeah. In many senses. It just felt like an extension to the years prior of almost like recovering from COVID. Yeah. In a way, it was kind of just like people weren't really figuring out exactly how to get back into the swing of things because we had just come out of the whole COVID thing. That was last year, though. No, but like it kind of ended early. I feel like it's still going. I feel like people are still mentally readjusting from that whole period. People Uh, are like, oh man, it's we were locked off for so long. How do we like life again? Well, you know what the kanji of the year was for Japan? Every year they have a kanji that symbolizes the year. What was it? uh, It was tax this year. (laughs) Uh, For all the tax hikes this year. And so tax was the kanji of the year. And I'm not kidding. Tax was the kanji of the year. That's so So, What the because Japanese people are obviously like motherfuckers raising the tax on us this year. Yeah. Um, Is that serious? Yeah, look it up. Last year, last year, you know what it was? What? War. <laughs> no, it was fight. It was war the year before, correct? Uh, was it war the year before? Mitsu. Oh no, so 2020 was Mitsu, which means uh, to stay close because of COVID. Ah, right. Yeah, right. yeah. 2021 was King or Gold because mm. of the Olympics. Oh, right, right. Uh, yeah, 2022 was Iksa, which means war. Ah, my bad. Or to, I, or man, to fight. Miss, miss two whole and 2023 there. was Zir, which is <laughs> tax. <laughs> <laughs> People, is there a reason why? I believe it's because of the tax hikes. They were a huge part of Japanese uh, kind of meme culture as well. Well, it's also probably because, because during COVID, uh, Japan just got completely fucked up. I've, I've yeah. seen the ceremony wise. of them writing this kanji. It's really like a, it's very fun to watch. It's like a very, very- Yeah, guy stands on the podium and he's like, it's the year, so, this year's kanji is- It's so intense. This guy just kind of like this really old man mm-hmm. with this giant brush writes this beautiful kanji. So Japan chooses taxes yeah. kanji of the year amid concern over cost yeah. of living. Uh, mm-hmm. Has been chosen as Japan's word of the year in a reflection of growing public anxiety <sighs> over the cost of oh. living and impeding tax rates. I feel but like they've blown the load too early because I think it's only going to get worse. Uh, they yeah. Yeah. kanji four years in a row. A tax <laughs> four years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what it wasn't. No, housing housing is next year. Housing is next year. Do, Economy do you, the year after that. Do you think during the Great Sag it was just tax, 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 tax? <laughs> There's no money to tax. Though. Well, at least uh Taylor Swift was a uh, person of the year, right? Yeah, I next know. year will be Swift. Yeah, <laughs> like hi <hi-yi. laughs> Did yeah. you did you did you hear about her interview that she gave after winning person of the year? No. Uh did so, she say, I was born in 1989. <laughs> what does this mean? And then walked off. <laughs> what does this mean? So there's, this, there's this meme of all of her concerts where like she starts off every, like, you know how like it's a very tropey thing to do for like, yeah, musicians yeah, yeah. to be she like, says, yeah. say some kind of like thing. But Taylor Swift does it in a way, which is just like, no disrespect, but it's just so incredibly corny. Mm. Where like, oh, you know, right. she would have like, yeah. you know, one of her biggest songs is like- You, you have know, now made an enemy of every Swifty out there. Uh, it's fine. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't give a shit. But like, you know, uh, like, you know, the song uh, Trouble, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I knew you were trouble when you walked yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, I know that one. There's Bang this up. clip that's been going around TikTok of the way that she introduces that song. And, and there's so many parodies of it just being like, you know, haven't you ever like been in a situation where you've met a guy at a party and you just knew that he was trouble. And then the song starts and it's just like, bro, come on. Like, can you can you do it in a way that's like a little bit more interesting, please? Like, yeah. learn from Lady Gaga, man. Like do something interesting with it. I think it's it's almost terrifying to put so much fame on one person. Yeah, oh, bro, I, I, totally. I can't imagine. I mean, that's what she kind of talked about in her interview, which was, um, uh, yeah, it's not her fault. I mean, no, it's not her fault at yeah, all. No. It's terrifying. I mean, <laughs> I love the it's just I how mean, it goes. What I found funny was, you, you know, she was talking about the whole thing that started with all the beef that she had with Kanye. I, I'm really happy for you. I'm let you finish. But Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. <laughs> and oh, just yeah. like, how it nearly the, ruined her career. Yeah, how it nearly ruined her career. And then she ended it on. <laughs> Look what happened now. Yeah, but, <laughs> and then she ended it on, but it's okay. Trash always takes itself out or something oh! along those lines. And I was just like, I'm not a, I'm not a Swiftly, I'm not a Taylor fan. Fucking but holy queen. shit. Mm. Taylor, you did not need to go that hard. How long do you think she was like cooking that line? Stop. She was holding onto that line. She's like, I'm Kanye's gonna win. already dead. I'm a win person of the year. I'm, 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 a bit, I'm, I'm holding onto this I, line. I, I wish it was, I wish there was, I wish it was true though. I wish it was true that trash took itself out. The people, trash people do not take themselves out. No, yeah. trash unfortunately people not. persist. Some of the most persistent people, in fact, are trash. Yeah, um, that's just how it goes. I mean, Kanye still has a fan base, even after all the shit he said. Yeah, man, which is like insane to think. Coping, 
on him. Yeah. <laughs> People always on code. Buddy made graduation. God. <laughs> it's my favorite meme. Like, I just, it sucks because it's like, man, I, I don't even want to fucking talk about him because I'm like, this guy's a piece of shit. Let's just. Let, let's just let his, him, his name become irrelevant. But some people always want to wait, to give weight to it because it's like watching a fucking car crash. Yeah. Well, at this point, it's more like reality TV. That's what it feels yeah, like. Crash, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, a, a lot of people do the same with YouTuber drama as well, which has also been spicy this year as they well. They just don't see them as real people in a sense, right? Like they just see it as like a show. I mean, if you make a enjoying. fucking apology video with the ukulele, do you deserve to be seen as a real functioning I, human I being? I think that was genius. <laughs> I think it was genius. Yeah. <laughs> I, I completely just, forgot about that. I'm just saying that. Because everyone remembers the apology, but nobody remembers the, the apology. <laughs> everyone remembers the ukulele. <laughs> it's genius. What a what a that was a, in a sense that was goaded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the drama itself was the talk of the town for the week. But now all I hear everyone think about is that funny ukulele bit she did. And yes, there's drama involved there. But I think that most people just remember it for the fucking song. Yeah, being absolutely horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was it was it was iconic. We're never going to top that as a human civilization. An apology. It's genius. It, the, I don't know, man. Give YouTubers time to cook, and I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna find something new. We'll find creative ways. I mean, <laughs> someone needs to write a book, a like a uh, textbook apology, like how to how to handle it, these kind of situations. Yeah, I'm gonna write. <laughs> how to make an apology video by Conor Cahoon? No, <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that just called PR, which some YouTubers definitely need in their lives? Yeah, totally. PR is yeah, PR is tough because every, everyone has an opinion and no one's right a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes all you can do is be wrong. It's just yeah. being less wrong. Well, it's um, also in those kinds of situations, right? Like I feel no matter how powerful of a PR team you have, it's just, it's there's never a winning situation. Like it's always a lose-lose, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just like, I don't know, man. Just don't fuck up. Hopefully, hopefully. Well, <laughs> <laughs> all right, gamers. <laughs> Enough about the swift nonsense. What are you doing next year? What's that, What's on the agenda? What do you think? What do you want to change next year? What do you want to do? What's the big thing? What's the mm. big thing? Are you talking about New Year's resolution? What's your, yeah, what's well, what New Year's goals, I guess, more than a resolution. I want to, this year I I raised 900, what, $950,000 for charity. I wanted, to, I wanted to raise a million this year. Congrats. Well, Congratulations. Well, I didn't make my goal, so I'm going to do it next Still year. Still a shitload of money, bro. Yeah, I'm going to do it next year. Easy. I want to play more Genshin next year. <laughs> <laughs> my goal for next year just, is just <laughs> my goal for next year is to start and finish the trail series before gone. Why can't you guys have good goals? That's a great goal. No, bro. it's a fucking terrible. Goal. Why do I, you get ripped, Joey? I do. I, <laughs> I don't want to get ripped. Get ripped. No, I'm good, man. Get, get I, up trails. No trails. I'm happy with how I look. I do have a goal next year, but it is a secret, and I don't want to say it publicly yet because I know what happens when you talk about projects that yeah. are true. you work all, all, on in the background. All my actual goals, I don't want to spoil. Yeah, because as soon as you say it, big people- balls. I want big <laughs> balls next year. <laughs> I'm getting a third testicle. I'm going to juice them up. I'm going <laughs> to- Massage them every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do ball stretching techniques. <laughs> my scrotum will be down on my knees, bro. What's a, okay, give me a superficial reward. Just a little thing. Okay, because you know, I think sometimes it's too easy to get lost in big accomplishments, right? We mm. all do this and we're all guilty of it. And it's something that I think is not helpful. What I think yeah. is more helpful is little things that you want to change next year. What is something small in your life that you want to improve on next year? That is just a small improvement on your daily life that you think will have better ramifications on your life. I mm. want to spend more time with friends and family. That's yeah, great. that's, that's great pretty one. much the change that I've enacted. Mm. Uh, that's, nice, nice. that's why I'm not doing many convention experience. Uh, like, yeah. you know, nice, we've nice. talked about this. We're mm. doing less traveling purely yeah. for work and that gives me more time to travel for the stuff that I value, you know? Yeah, I want to I want to cherish more of like my private life, I think. Like just okay. kind of, yeah, nice. you know, spend more time with obviously Aki, but also friends, family, you know, meet new people, go travel, mm. you know, just stuff that isn't necessarily in front of camera, I yeah. guess. And like, you know, cause like, I feel like I've missed a lot of that being a YouTuber, you know? Yeah, yeah. fair enough. What about and you? Yeah, same thing, honestly. I feel like I, I haven't appreciated time uh, with, with uh, close ones as much. Mm. Trying to balance that time, but it's always tough. Balancing time <laughs> is, is always tough. tough. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. And I think I think I got to that point where I want to focus more on exciting, like, you know, generic kind of like YouTuber things in my career. I just want to focus more on like exciting projects mm. uh, that 
I have, you know, put a lot of work and love yeah. into. Creatively that's, challenges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah that's, for sure. I'm not going to say now, uh, just because oh, yeah. I, Amen. as soon as I say it, it's gone. expectations yeah, I know, I know. are going to come and I'm not going to want to work. Just let it. him cook. Let the man cook. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's as vague as I am willing to be about mm -hmm. some of the shit that I've been working on. But uh, hey, like, with when it comes to trash taste stuff next year, we do have some pretty nice stuff cooking. Trash out. taste yeah, is changing, uh, mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. in uh, 2024. I think it's safe to say that, you know, uh, you know, when, when you've been a podcast for four years nearly now, three and a half, how, yeah. How close are we to four? Uh, when next, episode 200. Next right? yeah, May yeah. is four years. Well, well, this what what episode are we on, though? 180 something. Jeez. Yeah. Jesus, that's a lot. You know, I think Trash Taste, we're nearly four years in now. So yeah. I mean, like we have to start being like, all right, how do we make this, we're still fresh to the audience. Cause yeah. we're, we're past that honeymoon phase of the podcast where the first two years, you know, we uh, everything is all new and then we've got all these stories to talk about. So I think we're, we're, we're all actively trying to think, how do we make Trash Taste engaging? So we're all still engaged, but mm. also you guys are still engaged. Yeah. Um, so I always, one thing that I despise is when people speculate over like what we're doing on Trash Taste or yeah. the reason why it's changing. And it's like, dude, we just, ultimately, I think we just, we all have our own stuff that we love doing, but Trash Taste is still like this, this thing that we really want to make as good as possible. Of course. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is just a talk show. And I think that's gotta be the core of it. Like mm. how do we keep that core alive, but also make it new, yeah. make yeah. it exciting. I think uh, we had a talk uh, about what direction we wanted to take Trash Taste in 2024. Yeah. And I think we <clears throat> we had, you know, we only have a limited amount of time that we have to work with yeah. on, there's only so much time that I think we're all willing or <clears throat> want to put into Trash Taste just because it's right now, it's like a good 50-50 split between yeah. Trash Taste projects it's healthy. and personal projects. Yeah. And I think if there was a different ratio of split, I'd probably be unhappy with one side or the other. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. If you it know? was like barely any Trash Taste, I'd, I'd feel like, why? what the fuck is the point of doing it. If yeah. it's too much, I'd be like, I hate this is the only thing that I can creatively invest in. Mm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and we had a few options of different things that we, you know, could pursue. And I think the <clears throat> thing that we all wanted to pursue was doing more videos with each other, just not in the studio, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, pretty like, you know, different from just like the regular, just us sitting here talking kind of thing. Yeah. You know? And uh, previously, you know, we had called them specials because there would always be big budgets, big ideas, yeah. and you'd only get like a few of them mm. per year, if not fucking yeah. one at most, Once you know? Year, yeah. <laughs> which which yeah. is fine, but I yeah. think it also made it very limiting. Right? Yeah, it made it very it. limiting. Uh, so next year we kind of wanted to put all of our spare time we don't have recording the podcast yeah. into making more, I would like to call it trash taste outside, you know? Yeah, yeah just like fun little Mini videos, specials. kind of yeah. giving you guys more outside yeah. stuff. Mm. I yeah, think, I think, yeah, it's, but but obviously to be able to do that, I think we have to, we have to be in Japan more, which is like the big thing. So I think we yeah. did a lot of tours. We did like back-to-back -back tours, which was yeah. a lot, mm. which a lot of people were like, why, why are they fucking touring all the time? They just yeah. fucking make stuff. And, I, and I, to some extent, I agree. I think touring is, takes up a lot of time. Mm. It has, um, and energy as well. Yeah, it's yeah. like you, you know, we had to pre-record a ton. And I think that it, in some senses, it may, might've hurt the podcast. In other senses, I think it helped us. Like I, I, when people ask me like, why I do it? Or why, why I personally did touring, I always tell them like, listen, like as an entertainer is what we're supposed to be doing. The what, the most valuable experience you can get is real on stage experience, having to be entertained. Totally. Having to like read the crowd, having to like kind of have that kind of it's feedback. Totally different skill set you have to learn as well. Dude, and I think as an entertainer, it's like there's no way to improve so rapidly other than being on stage, having to make jokes, try these like, Sometimes unfunny jokes, sometimes you, you bomb. Yeah. Sometimes mm -hmm. you say a joke that doesn't get any reaction. Sometimes you say a joke that gets an amazing reaction. Mm. And like having to have that kind of live feedback is so crucial and have learning <clears throat> stage presence and learning all these factors. I think I think it made us all like better entertainers, like watching, yeah. you know. And it definitely like lit a fire under our asses yeah. too, like meeting you guys, you know, after shows and stuff and seeing you guys like physically there. Like it made yeah. us realize like, oh, okay. Like we need, we don't want to disappoint you guys. Like yeah. we mm -hmm. want to obviously like creatively, you know, challenge ourselves yeah. as well. But we also want to make sure that we give you guys the stuff yeah. that you'll be proud of and you'll enjoy watching. Uh, so yeah. Oh, we've owned enough of that shit. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, I'm done. I, 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 I'm done. Least, I'm done. At least I think we can pretty confidently say at least 2024 that probably won't be a tour. No, uh, there won't be a tour. There, okay, so we all we might have some one-off shows in some cities. Sure. Uh, I, I will say that any time we've made the decision, any time that we are traveling to a place uh, for maybe some kind of event, there is 
probably going to be some kind of ulterior motive, which is yeah. probably going to be a trash taste outside, a trash taste special mm. yeah, we're that, really, we're, <laughs> that we're going to be filming there. Yeah, we're, hopefully. I mean, we're really bad at say, saying things and committing to them. Well, not, not, I mean, not, not in general, just with only with specials, really. The yeah. one thing we can promise you, though, is that there will be more specials in 2024 Absolutely, than 2023. Yeah, like 100%. We, we said that last year and we didn't uh, commit to it, but we I swear to God, this year yeah. we actually will. This time we're actually <laughs> committing to it, trust oh, us. Yeah, because Lord. we are committed to it, because here's a sneak peek of some of the stuff we've already filmed. Using Dignity Speed Run of a video. Nah, you hit the map. Welcome to the Trash Taste. Why are you looking at us? This. Oh my God. Shrimp, salmon, pineapple. Oh god, the yoga mat. Wow. And also I think one thing that we're trying to do is give more value to patrons. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now we only have the credits at the end, which is fine. I think that's fine because I think a lot of patrons don't really they, they just want to support the show and, and early access these ideas. to clips and stuff like that. Yeah, right? and you get yeah. early access to clips, but we're actually making exclusive content for the patient. Yeah. It's nothing crazy. Mm. Just chill little things that if you really enjoy the show, you might like. Sorry. Yeah. But, Actually, uh, right uh, now, oh, 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 bloody hell. <laughs> <up. laughs> sorry. As, as Khan said, <laughs> uh, sorry, as Connor said, excuse me. Uh, yeah, if you guys uh, actually go over to the Patreon now, starting from yes, this yes. month, we are going to be releasing weekly videos on Patreon uh, uploaded at the same time as we upload each of these videos uh, here on the YouTube channel, just for you guys. So you guys over on the Patreon get extra content every single week of us. In fact, if you go on right now, then you get a bunch of content Hell for yes. this month that is fully available to watch. And you can do so by going to patreon.com slash trash days. It supports us in making like cool specials and, yep. you know, other cool projects outside of just regular podcasting. But also you guys get to see us do some stuff that you'll never see or never have seen before. Here's a sneak peek of some of the stuff we filmed on our Patreon already. Play the clip, Mudan. <laughs> this wasn't like this in Double Dash. Oh, what are you talking about? Have nice. um, you all been to Canada? Uh, yeah, we went on there on tour, Joey. Oh yeah. I've also been to Canada. <laughs> Does Smash Bros count as a fighting game? Bro, my fist is so <laughs> fucking large. This is anime <laughs> fam. Don't fuck the sheet. <laughs> <laughs> also play just the way I like it, boys. <laughs> Let him cook. <laughs> <laughs> you give off Luigi energy, Joey. What the fuck is <laughs> happening? Yeah. I'm trying to fucking listen. I can do D's. Well, that's not a word. I think that's a word. No, it's not a word. To be like completely transparent, we do want to bring more value to the Patreon. And a lot of that is because of the plans that we have in 2024. We've already filmed some specials and one of them and a few of the ideas that we already have booked out are uh, some of the highest budgets that we've ever spent on a video. Yeah. But that's not going to be every video, right? Yeah. I, we, that's like the expectation that I want to set. We want to have a mix of high budget and high kind of like- High quality, but high low quality. Budget, you know? And some videos that are just more uh, that are just more casual, you know, yeah. that are easier to film. Totally. Uh, just more, more shit of us doing things that are not in the studio. That I just told yeah. you shit for two hours, yeah. you know? Yeah, because I know a lot of people have been asking for more streams and that's been a big like talking point. Mm. Yeah. And to be completely transparent, one of like the biggest hardest decisions we had to make is Trash Taste After Dark started as complimentary content. Mm. Like that's how it started, right? Mm. We, we kind of like went live randomly one time. Yeah. And a big part of After Dark was COVID just gave us a lot of fucking time in the country. Yeah, After Dark was completely unplanned. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was completely unplanned. And we did a lot of, lot of fun things with After Dark. And I think going forward, it's going to be the same kind of feeling where if we do a stream, it's going to be a special event. Yeah, yeah. I, saw, I saw a lot of people being like, oh, After Dark's fucking over. It's like, no, no, Gaunt said one time that we're not really focusing on it. Yeah. It'll probably still happen at some yeah. point. It just won't be frequent at all. And I think yeah. that's a mm. healthy way of it's, it's it. It's more like if it, uh, if it happens, uh, it's just going to be the same kind of feeling when we, the first time we went live with After Dark, yeah. which is just, fuck it, we just, had some time and we wanted to go live. Yeah. And that was pretty much it, you oh, know? Pretty much. But the channel is currently being used to show every Trash Taste episode forever. So if you do want to watch Trash Taste at random points with live audience, yeah, you can go do that as yeah. well. It's yeah. Twitch as well. <clears throat> yeah, so patrons, we hope that you're happy with like the mini pieces of content, which, you know, which are some of them are just ideas that 
really did not fit on other channels. Oh, yeah, like I, just I have the channel, yeah. Like yeah. I was yeah. playing Mario Kart or yeah, fucking last... playing, you know, Mario Party. Like it just doesn't really make sense to make a whole stream about yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. Cause like most of them are just like half an hour videos or yeah. some shit mm. like that. Uh, and most of them are just filmed right after we have some spare time between recordings, yeah. you know? Yeah, so, they're kind of made with the intent of like, you know, after you've watched your weekly Trash Days episode, then there's just like another little side thing to like kind of finish yeah. it off, mm. you know? So yeah. yeah. Like the important thing is we try to make it not only manageable for all our plans, but manageable for our mental health as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we don't get burnt out. Yeah, ultimately <laughs> I think there's a huge value that we place on, on being here consistently weekly and providing you a show that we think is good every single week. Mm. And, and and some some weeks it's super easy to do that. And other mm -hmm. weeks it's really hard to do that. Um, but ultimately we all, we just try to give you something weekly. And uh, we hope that that's good and <laughs> that you yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, and we, we're gonna try our best to keep doing that for the next year as well. All right. Good and uh, that's pretty much it for this year in a uh, trash taste 2020. Yeah. Hey, look at all these patrons though, boys. Look like, at all, all these patrons all that have they, these, signed up. These guys yeah. were the ones supporting us in 2023 and have made oh, it no. possible. Yeah. And again, if you would like to support the show into the new year of 2024, as well as get access mm -hmm. again to the Patreon exclusive content, which we will be releasing every single month, then head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Also follow us on Twitter, send us your memes on the subreddit. And if you hate our face, listen to to us on Spotify and we will see you gamers in the brand new year of 2024. All right, see you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.